Hey folks, right, we're going to be doing Dictator Top Trumps. Uh, this is Academic Agent's idea, so would you like to tell people what it's about? Yes, um, so d basically, I, I don't know uh, if you two guys play this when you were a kid, but uh, we had this game called Top Trumps, uh, you know, a uh, schoolboy favorite, um, and typically it'd be monsters or it would be cars, and you'd have these um, different categories, um, and they had ratings on them, and essentially uh, you or like two of your mates would have these cards, and you'd read out various different ratings. It would be like cylinder, 1.8, and then if, you, if your cylinder was bigger, you'd end up winning the card from me. Mm. Um, and a while back, uh, the British show and I, uh, we did a stream called Tory Top Trumps, which proved to be a lot of fun, where we ranked uh, each of the contenders to possibly become the new prime minister in various different categories. And uh, I thought that as a Halloween special, as something to do uh, to commemorate the horror of Halloween, we could do the same thing with various dictators from history, racing them in their ghastliness. Um, before, before we do that, can we, uh, can we get a rough estimate as to what percentage of these dictators are socialists? Uh, <laughs> um, I reckon it's more than half. Almost all of them. <laughs> I, th I think, I think, I mean, it depends on uh, the likes of uh, Assad and Saddam and so on. But yes, basically, 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 they're all socialists apart from Hitler. <laughs> no, Hitler was a socialist too. I'm, I'm sick of this, oh, Hitler wasn't a socialist nonsense. He absolutely was. <laughs> Yeah, they're all various different types of socialists. I, I, guess the, I, guess the, I guess the only one who isn't actually, to be fair to him, is uh, the Ayatollah. Like, <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. You have to like a theocrat, not a socialist. Great. So in, in that regard, aren't dictators, to a certain extent, collectivist? Um, could you have an individualist dictator? Well, I suppose it's probably possible. So the closest one, you know, I, I think they will, not they will one, always uh, tend to have a leaning that way, won't they? Um, to kind of just like huh. to treat the masses as the masses. Well, yeah, but I mean, that that's that, that's more the inclination rather than it being socialism, if you know what I mean. Is, does collectivism inevitably breed dictators? I mean, it certainly has a tendency to produce dictators, and I don't. I I'd have to think about it. I'd have to think about it. In all seriousness, I do think. I mean, just to be serious for a second, I do think there is a there is a. Even though I made a video saying that uh, fascism is a form of socialism, which is absolutely true, um, I do think that they come from slightly different places. Uh, the, I guess, the emotion that leads to. I mean, this is going to sound strange, but I think the emotion that leads to fascism is too much love of home. Like you love your family, but a bit too much. Um, and, you know, if you've ever seen, like, actual hardcore nationalists, it all comes from wanting to protect their, their home and their family, but pushing it to an extreme. And if you push it far enough, you, you, you eventually get the likes of a, a Hitler or a, I, or a I Muslim. Think, um, I think the problem with it is really, it, it's not so much the, the motive, it's the process for me. I mean, like, you know, so, someone... I've got no doubt that, you know, people who are fighting and dying in the First World War or something had a tremendous love of their homeland to sacrifice their lives fighting an enemy they didn't even know. Um, but it, it's the it's the, it's the the construct of what becomes, like, the people or the nation. Stuff like, you know, it's, it's the sort of mental structure that they create that has defined boundaries. And these are the proletariat. These are, you know, and, and it's a stereotype, basically. <laughs> It's a, a raging stereotype, and that becomes more important than any individual German or Prol. Well, that, um, that's where I see the collectivism come in. Um, hmm. When it comes to fascism it's, itself, I wouldn't say it is a love of home, although I can see what you mean, because it's a sort of uber-patriotism, isn't it? Um, but hmm. I would say it's more, um, it's driven by the desire for order. I mean, hence you've got, you know, the Farskes being the the sign of the fascists. Um, right, yeah. You know, that basically they very often come as a reaction to chaos. The basically, you know, the Weimar Republic, you have chaos on the streets. Um, I think, you have the I rise think of the communists present. in Italy. Yeah. And, and it's once again, it's Mussolini who is the strong man who kind of defies it all and brings order 
Um, so I think yeah, that's, I, I think, that's, I think that's just an opportunity. From. I think they're always present, but they, that they they're looking for opportunity like that. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess my my idea was where the the I guess the ultimate emotion comes from. The ultimate emotion of communism. Meanwhile, so yes, we could say it's love of home, or we could say like British show, it's a, it's a love of order or hierarchy. They arguably come from the same place. Like I don't know if there's any um, Game of Thrones uh, fans watching, but you know the Lannisters, where you've literally got Jamie Lannister shagging his sister. They love each other that much. You can naturally see how the Lannisters are natural fan fascists. Like they're literally, uh, <laughs> they love each other so much that they don't want to have sex outside of their family. Um, and I, I guess that's an extreme form of it. But that's Are you fashion. suggesting that Richard Spencer occasionally porks his sister? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's it's um, a really roundabout way of saying it, academic agent. <laughs> oh. So, um, whereas communism, okay, is bought that if you had to say, well, what is the root emotion for communism? It's basically envy. It's, oh, yeah. you know, you, you, you live in, you, you live next to store to someone who's got a bigger house than you and you don't like that. So you want to bring their house down or, um, you know, they've, they've in fact done like tests with, uh, children and things. Um, and I, I thought this was really interesting. Apparently most children. Okay. If you just ask them, how would you like to divide these sweets around the group? They would do it kind of, uh, equitably, you know, they, they'd give everybody one sweet, sweet each, or, um, if there was enough for like, if they ended up with two and everyone else had one, they, they'd give up the one sweet, which is very nice. Mm -hmm. But if you change the, uh, experiment a little bit and you say, well, as a reward for doing this, you can have two. Okay. You can either have, um, you can have two and everybody else gets, uh, one, or you can do it different ways, but, but essentially most children at the age of five would rather everybody else have nothing to spite everyone else and themselves just get one. And I think there's something in that. Uh, kind of natural... Socialists are essentially five-year-olds. <laughs> it's, it's, it's essentially that same thing where, you know, you'd rather spite somebody else to not have something than um, to have uh, than for everyone else to have the same. Yeah. Does, does that make any sense? So, so no. much of, so much of socialism and so much of communism is bringing somebody else down. Uh, and it even goes into the social justice crowd. Like, you know, if you look at Black Lives Matter, they want to bring down white people to bring themselves up. And mm -hmm. it's that same kind of idea all, uh, all the time. So I, I just think the emotional root is, is slightly different in each case. But it ends up in the same place, which is the, the state with their uh, boot on the face of the individual. I mean, I can see, I can see where you're coming from here, and I, I agree to a point. Um, but don't we think that if it wouldn't have been the czarist Russia, that there wouldn't have then been a communist revolution? So again, a bit like with the fascists, that they need their opportunity in chaos. Don't the the communists, at least to some extent, require their opportunity in a kind of extremely divided society where there is a a very, very thin crust of the hyper rich, and then you know, the 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 kind of proletariat underneath it. If you know what I mean. Um, yeah, they they, they have to define an output. in a way a reaction to something that has been there before. And if if that opportunity doesn't exist, then communist uh, communism doesn't rise. I think there are a few factors, uh, to be honest. Um, but I, I imagine having a hyper wealthy class under a despot is probably a factor that is in communism's favor. Yeah. Um, right. The, 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 they need to have an elite outgroup uh, to uh, define themselves against, whereas, whereas the fascists tend to have like a foreign outgroup, I guess Which that's is, the main reason. It's, it's really interesting with the socialists, isn't it? Because I, I love the, the phenomenon of champagne socialists. I, lo I love that. It's just like, what, what, what are you really complaining about? My dad? <laughs> okay. I know, but but like what I mean, not to get to uh, modern day politics. Um, but like, look at the Corbyn crowd. Okay. Yep. Look at look at the actual things they voted for, and they're not really socialist. They're they're voting to give themselves free education. Yep. They're, they're they're voting to stop their own parents 
from uh, having to pay more for their own health for the dementia mm -hmm. tax. <laughs> you know, it's kind of there's nothing actually. So like, do you know what's not a real class war? They're, they're they're basically demanding the working poor pay for these things for them. Yeah, I mean, they want they want poor people to pay for them to go to university yeah. and to pay for them to get sick when they're older, so they so, don't have to move out of their posh house or whatever. Absolutely, and and do you know what really annoys me is like um, w the way we do it at the moment is a loan, and it's like what's unfair about that? If you if you want to go to university, you can get a loan that you pay back after you get your degree. How how is that in any way unfair? Well, I mean, yeah. I I don't really have anything, you know, on principle again against the fact of people getting their university degrees paid for, but I think there has to be some utility to them if that is the case. So I have no I have no problem with us funding the degrees of say doctors or architects and engineers and things like that. The nation needs that. I'm not really sure whether I, I would agree that we would need to pay for gender studies or, or something like that. Sure, but then then we start getting into uh, judgments about the various degrees, and then you're going to have it, it's going to end into end in some kind of sectarian conflict in academia, basically. I, I mean, if, if there we is, just say, look, all the better. A, yeah, but we, no, well, maybe yeah. <laughs> but if we if we just say, look, you you can have a, I mean, literally the way it now, you can have a loan to go to university and do your degree. Then I mean, like. Who is being punished there? Who's losing out? Who who doesn't get to take advantage of that? And I think that, you know, there isn't anyone. That, I mean, literally anyone can get this loan. It's not predicated on anything. It's predicated on whether you got accepted into a university or not. And so it's just like, yeah. like okay, like the, the poorest and the richest, assuming they need to do that, which I'm sure they don't, uh, have the opportunity to do this. And it's not, it, it, you know, they personally bear the cost. What's wrong with that? Why should, why? Well, well, the the very for, the very poorest get a uh, get additional help as well, yeah. Um, and the universities are incentivized to take them because they're you know worried about their uh, PR and so on. Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's just worth pointing out, of course, that Sargon of Akkad is now on record here saying that Owen Jones doesn't like his dad. I'm absolutely certain he doesn't. <laughs> 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 um, I don't know whether Owen Jones likes it that. <laughs> right, okay, so I just want right, to... Uh, Sargon, what do you think about the British Game Institute? Uh, I've not heard of it, actually. Um, there are a few others, but we should really... Uh, we should get on, because uh, everyone's talking about some sort of trucker piece attack that's happened in New York, but I'm waiting for information to come out. Um, not that I ever really talk about much of that sort of stuff. Like, off the top, anyway. But uh, anyway, so... Okay, let's get, let's get into this. So we've got Fidel Castro, uh, a champion of social justice. I have it... On good authority from Jeremy Corbyn. Um, what what was his body count then, academic agent? Uh, so let me have a look. Uh, I'll bring up the stats. Let me, let me take a quick guess though. Let me. I haven't looked at these in advance. So, um, I'm I'm going to guess it's probably around half a million. Uh, oh, yeah, seem to be quite off there. Yes. Yeah, quite a way off. Fidel Castro's mm. body count is a lowly thirty three thousand. Is that it? That's that's all. I, that's the highest number I could find for Castro's really? body count. I, now, I suppose I was, I was judging my guess by the number of Cuban exiles there were, which is something like six hundred thousand. But, so, but the, don't forget, these are actual people who've been killed for political yeah. reasons. That doesn't include incarceration. So how how many people were locked up by him, for example? I don't know, <laughs> or re-education camp or whatever. Yeah. You know, so. Well, uh, 30,000 is way lower than I expected of Castro. What a, what a hero. <laughs> 3,000 people of social, social justice. Well, yeah, I think he, the whole thing kind of demonstrates that in order to be a dictator, um, you don't necessarily have to be, you know, wading in blood. Um, you can also just, I mean, obviously you, you, uh, you know, you seize power for yourself, but in order to have an awful regime, it, it can just be so atrocious and so oppressive that it just basically quashes everything beneath it rather than yeah. you necessarily just needing to murder lots of people. I mean, there's, there's a few things I really like to say about Castro. The first thing is, has anyone else noticed that he is just a spitting image of Liam Neeson? Just, I mean, exactly I was, the same I was about to say Justin Trudeau, but yeah. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Oh, let's not go in. The, let's not go down the Trudeau route. We'll never. Oh, think. you know it's true. You know, I should have had a card for him, shouldn't I? Yes, yeah. but that that then would kind of raise the issue of whether socialism is genetic. 
<laughs> there are studies to suggest. Oh God! No, low, low testosterone men are more likely to be socialists. <laughs> oh, Jones. With that beard, low testosterone. <laughs> Sorry, say again. Low testosterone with that beard. That's true. That's true. Um, I mean, I, I guess we have to say, like, that there is a kind of a, a, a on the women front. Castro never struggled for the women. Even before he was a dictator, he kind of him and Che Guevara, and I guess they were like pinups in a way that there was a kind of sexiness about them. Um, and I think like the shallowness <laughs> of the, the, the general shallowness of the left uh, goes for those sorts of things. So, but I, I think that there's something about like the you know being in the jungle with the guerrilla troops, like puffing on a massive Cuban cigar. Um, I mean, there's a kind of romance about Castro. I mean, there was a reason I chose that photograph. Um, because, I mean, look at him. That is a studded pose. That, <laughs> that is a poseur in action. Is it? <laughs> you know, that is not someone who's just basically stand, sitting there and he's just been shot. He is making sure that he looks as cool as he possibly can in that particular shot. Right, well, okay, they, so now we did, believe I, that we'll I, fancy Fidel Castro. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, on the longevity front, obviously, uh, this longevity is meant to be for uh, how long they were in power. Well, he's, got, he's got to be winning this. This whole perfect thing. 10, it's be like a, a ten, perfect ten, top perfect ten. ten. I mean, uh, what was it sixty years or something? But I, I was going to say another way of measuring longevity. Castro famously used to give like six-hour speeches. <laughs> Nobody would be allowed to leave. <laughs> Jeez, I think I think that's more level of insanity than longevity, actually. <laughs> God, that must have been insufferable. Can you imagine like going on like little didn't, finer points of socialist economics and didn't stuff? Didn't Xi Jinping just do something similar? You know, when they had the communist um congress just recently in China and he was kind of turned into the new Mao. Didn't he hold a speech that went on for hours? He I don't want to yeah, I, w I wouldn't be surprised at yeah, all. I remember seeing it on the news that he, he had finished his speech and he sat down and he was sitting next to one of the um, the previous leaders of China. And, the, the, you know, the old man just kind of leaned over to him and tapped his watch. You know, and it was kind of almost a subtle way of saying, look, we've got better things to do than sit here <laughs> listening to you. Thank you very much. And, um, yeah. You wouldn't be allowed to do that in five years' time. <laughs> <laughs> that would be like gulag immediately. <laughs> so yes. we're giving we're giving Castro um, low body count. So body count of what? One, two? One, that's a one. one. Thirty three thousand is nothing. Hang on, anyway. Should I should I edit these pictures and actually put the numbers on them? That might be quite tricky. <laughs> nah. But uh, yeah, I think I think a one. Fairly straightforward. I, I think a one is fairly is fairly fair. Um, yeah, so, so longevity is obviously a perfect ten. I mean, yes, but, uh, without a without a shadow of a doubt. Right. Now, in, in body count of he, one, yeah, one ten. Was Castro re relatively sane? Has anyone actually um, watched those Oliver Stone uh, yeah. interviews? You know, yeah. Oliver Stone went and uh, yeah. interviewed Castro as as he did with Putin. Um, I mean, he was Oliver, he Oliver Stone worshipped her. But we have to kind of we have to kind of take one thing into consideration. If right. you are the leader of Cuba, and you choose to pick a fight with the United States of America, <laughs> then then maybe that has to also weigh in regarding uh, your level. So yeah, of but if you've got the Soviet Union backing you up, there are loads of. I tell you, yes. I tell you something else about Castro as well. He was he was like um, on the kind of Trotsky end of the, the communist ideology, which meant he believed in world socialism. I .e. he wanted a revolution around the world. They called it a permanent revolution. So so there's all these moments in history where like Castro is sending you know Cuban troops to Congo and to Zimbabwe yeah, yeah. and Namibia. They were also active. Yes. Um, so it's kind of like little Cuba is. <laughs> kind of funding these really shit revolutions around the world. So I don't know if that pay, plays into his insanity, but like I don't know if you if you make if you think of him as a his foreign policy was quite hawkish in a way. Like he was always yeah. funding, always sending the Cuban army off to far flung de destinations. That money could have <laughs> probably been better spent on corn. You know, <laughs> didn't they fail as well? Yes, 
Yeah. So yeah, that was that was money well spent. Invariably, yes, invariably they failed. Because yeah. I mean, let's face it, what sort of imperial power can Cuba possibly be <laughs> when it's trying to project itself across the Atlantic to Namibia? <laughs> <laughs> I just, what were you thinking, Fidel? Um, there's, there's, to be fair, one, right? To be fair, one more little thing. Sorry. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. You, you carry on. I've, I've got one more little thing to mention about Castro, which people might not know. Uh, well, yeah, I was, I was going to say I, he probably wasn't insane. You know, he was probably just power hungry and bloodthirsty, and not that bloodthirsty, in all fairness. Maybe that's, just, that's that's the difference between ins, insane and delusional, isn't it? That you may mm -hmm. delude yourself that you can kind of create some kind of grand plan whereby you help socialism spring into action in faraway Africa. So um, we, it, but we, it we have, have you a that that's relevant. Uh, Oliver Cromwell, top dictator, top warlord, and top angler. The size of your mass graves isn't everything, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, Cromwell probably killed more than thirty-three thousand in in Ireland alone. Like, he just kind of went over there and yeah, I could you know, yeah. Um, but 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 anyway, uh, just to make an, anal an an analogy on the insanity front, um, if I could do it through Batman villains, okay. So, like, the Joker is truly insane. Everybody would agree. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. The, whereas the Penguin is just like a criminal mastermind. Uh, but probably oh, yeah. nothing about the Penguin strikes me as insane. Like, like the Penguin ends up going to uh, the Penguin does not go to Arkham. He goes to the other, like the the, the Blackmore shitty jail instead. Um, would Castro go to Arkham, or would he go to the same jail as the Penguin? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think he was insane. Uh, thoughts on yeah. the latest truck of peace? I'm waiting for information to come out. So, no, no thoughts as of yet. Sorry, by yourself. Yes, I mean they may not even send him to prison. They, they might just might just tag him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> given that he's only managed thirty three thousand. Oh right, so black, no, it, black yeah. prison, yeah. Right, okay. So level of insanity. What we're going to give him a two? Two. Yeah. 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 Probably quite high on the sense of style, like Cuban well, chic. That's, like, that's well, just it. As I say, I mean, look at him here. You know, um, okay, go on, so, let's indulge so, your man so, crush on Fidel Castro. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, sense of style, I think you would have to give him a pretty high rating. Well, okay, um, hang on. Let's stop. Let's stop. He he's actually not very stylish. He he dresses in military fatigues. You know, he, he's he, like that's not very cool. He's not Gaddafi, is he? You know, like as the sense of style goes, that's pretty fucking standard. You know, don't I think I think you're you're conflating his um magnetic personality, shall we say, for a a sense of uh, fashion, which I don't I think could, he has. I, well, <laughs> There's a lot of best. I don't I don't take I don't take the magnetic personality at face value. I think it is a studied <laughs> I think it's I think it's a pretense. And I think that has to kind of count he he is trying effectively on this photograph to be the the James Dean of dictators. <laughs> <laughs> You're lobbying pretty hard to keep a Castro low. I'm just noting on the ch on the chat that's quite a split on the Castro. Uh, yeah, sense come of style. on, come on, chat, come on. Like, you got to settle this first because I don't I don't think he's very stylish at all. I'm not saying it wasn't contrived, but there, there's still like a, a certain uh, deliberate nature to having a contrived and unstylish brand. So. You know, this I don't know if sense of style is, yeah. Except everyone else is like, well, oh god, the chat's really split on it actually. Four, so there's a lot of fours. There's a lot of people calling him a metrosexual. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a bit. Lots of people okay. are saying that he's got so much swag, so much style. Okay, so I'm seeing uh, lots of uh, four to seven. So let's let's give him a five. Okay. Sense of style, uh, bonus trait. Uh, yeah, star. I think that's that's not really a numerical factor, isn't it? That's more. That's more. Is there anything that you could kind of point to that is a you know a specific thing that this yes. person had in? Yes, there uh, is. As a kind Man of bonus. managing to impoverish your country, become a billionaire, <laughs> and then get called a champion of social justice by yeah. a first world Marxist is pretty impressive. Well, I think I, his bonus trait has got to be pinup of leftist twats in the West. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Kind of yes. like, he's the one dictator it was all right to love. Yeah, like even right. like my even like my dad was like a bit sad when he died. I was like, Dad, what are you what are you doing? He was like, Yeah, he, I support the poor man and all this. I was like, Come on, Fidel Castro. <laughs> he's the only rich man in Cuba. <laughs> 
it's, I think it's the I think it's the idea that he stood up to that he stood up like people like to support an underdog, and yeah, Q was yeah. this like tiny little yeah. island next to he, he next stood to up to freedom with his underdog <laughs> brand of oppression. What a what a hero! <laughs> what a, that's so great. Um, there's there's one dreaming. more thing <laughs> I wanted to mention about uh, Castro, which people might not know, and it kind of blew my mind when um, I found this out a couple of months back. But for a long time, from 1959 until 1976, yeah. he technically wasn't the head of Cuba. It was a guy called Osvaldo Torado. Oh, really? And the, the communists did this a lot, where the technical head of state, and the Russians did this as well, like Stalin, for the vast majority of time, was not the head of state of uh, Russia. It was other people like Molotov and various other kind of puppets, essentially. What Castro was, he was the head of the Communist Party. Mm -hmm. He had like the, you know, the chairman of the council or whatever it is, whereas the guy who actually signed his name on all the dotted lines and you know would have met the presidents was this guy called Torado, um, but he was like a total puppet, uh, a total uh, puppet kind of. Uh, yeah, was he the useful idiot who eventually just got shot? I'm trying to remember if he committed suicide or something, but they, they, yeah. they usually they usually uh, they usually like really sad men who have like no. Yeah. No suicide by whatever. firing squad, that kind yeah. of thing. He, he Hillary Clinton'd him, yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, there we go. He, he committed suicide in 1983. Uh, um, okay, I think, so there we go. I, I think he should have a despot bonus trait, but like, I don't know how to measure it. Yeah, I, I don't think you can measure the kind of the bonus traits, but I, I, would, I would agree with academic agent here that I think the fact that he is the acceptable form of, you know, socialist dictator that you can't really associate yourself with Uncle Joe anymore, in which <laughs> Labour quite like to associate themselves in past decades. Yeah. But Fidel Castro, you can still mention and still say what for a great man he was, and you can still be leader of the Labour Party and a potential prime minister. Yeah, it's really scary. Really scary. Um, uh, okay, so what am I writing in the despot bonus trait? In, I, I don't think part, you could like, fit that in. Uh, it would be kind of you know accept yeah. you know almost acceptability would you know social acceptability would almost be his despot bonus trait. Just put a little picture of Jeremy Corbyn in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, oh, this could be a pain. Oh, thanks, thanks for this. Um, I'll t I'll take his official picture. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we can't on. spend this long on each one of them. But I no, guess Ca I bet Castro is like a special case. I guess um, <laughs> there are about uh, people in the chat. There are about thirty of these, so I don't know if we're going to get through all of them. We'll, we'll do our best. Yeah, we'll we'll go through <laughs> the big ones at least. Um. People are saying cigars should be his bone. You know, I I got into cigars. I've been smoking a lot of Cuban cigars of late, um, and I'm really torn every time I buy one because. I, th I think it's kind of like quite a cool thing to do and it's kind of a bit like wine tasting or cheese tasting yeah. it's kind of a connoisseur's thing but at the same time every time i buy one i'm giving money to the socialist government of cuba so that's that's true but they are really nice cigars so they're good they're really good right, do, yeah. do you smoke cigars as well I do, every now and again yeah yeah I, i'm quite into I it I do, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm afraid do. that that uh, that story that some of the finest cigars are are rolled on the thigh of a Cuban virgin in the factory. <laughs> uh, they are supposed to be sadly a myth. Oh, I imagine right. it is just for like practicality's sake. Uh, all right. All right. Let's Sh get let's we go on, on to the, the next one. one. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's let's do a, an uncontroversial one. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I mean, speaking, all right, okay. Speaking of people who is acceptable to like, have you watched any of the BBC's coverage of the uh, October Revolution recently? Because no, you know, it's do the, they speak it's, of Lenin in, in glowing terms? Do they? I mean, I was watching a documentary, and they've literally got pro-Lenin historians on. It's not like I mean, they do everything they possibly can to <laughs> try to. He was, a, he was a significant figure of the twentieth century. That's the kind of way in which they're portraying him. Really? You know, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of, of the kind 20th of... Century, yes. the, the undercurrent to a lot of it is that just hadn't been for Stalin. Like, Stalin was the baddie. But Lenin, you know, he, he his heart was in the right place. You know, it's still all right to be... It's still all right to like him. 
and he wears a cap just like Jeremy Corbyn. Oh, which, okay. which I th which, which I think is supremely irresponsible at this moment when kids need to know of the evil of socialism. <laughs> I think it's bad for the BBC to be putting out like semi-Soviet propaganda. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think there's ever a bad time or place to condemn the BBC for putting out socialist propaganda. Like it, you know, even like there's, it's never wrong. <laughs> Right, so what's, what's Lenin's body count? If Stalin was the real bad guy, how many did Lenin knock off? You're the one with the numbers. Right, um, 8 million. Oh, only 8 million, right. <laughs> so <laughs> 8, eight, eight million, million for Lenin. Pr practically a saint. So are, um, these, are, these, are these people that he were kind of starved to death in, in, in you know, early days of revolution? It, it's or? a combination of like gulag deaths, um, executions, old like because you, you got to remember they killed tons of old czarists and things mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. uh the, the revolution was violent so a lot of these would be like civil war deaths or like uh people they rounded up and killed in the uh aftermath of the revolution um and then also people who starved so so he was already quite quite big on gulags was he i was pretty surprised that the numbers were that big for lenin i i mean testament to the level of pro-Soviet propaganda that we're subject to. I didn't even know that Lenin had killed that many people uh, until okay, I looked so this up. So. What, 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 what rating are we giving him on the body count scale? Uh, I mean, a well, million is already pretty solid, isn't it? I mean... Yeah. He's at least it, a five. At, at least, least five, five or six. I, I would at least... I would give him a six. Yeah, I, I mean, and that's, I think, being kind. Um, how long did he last for? It's 1917 till 2000, uh, 1924. <laughs> yeah, they did. Really good innings. 24, 24, I want to say. 24 years. So, no, no, no. Um, 1924. So, what's so that? He has a good seven, seven years. years. So, okay. not particularly good then. So, about three? Not well, three on longevity. I think he spent most of his life in exile, didn't he? Because, um, yeah. you know, the Tsarists didn't let him into Russia. Yeah. And then the I mean, Germans thought it would be a clever ploy in order to knock Russia out of um, the war, that they effectively did a deal with the Swiss that he was living in Switzerland. Yeah, and, and it worked. Allow him to travel through German territory into Russia where he can foment revolution. And it worked. And it worked, but they had no idea what they unleashed. Yes. Yeah, it, you know, but, but let's be fair, no one could have really predicted <laughs> the consequences. So we give him well, a... He, a yeah, so I'll give him a three actually, here. Literally, he was he was literally a weapon of war for the Germans. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What 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 happened is that there was a there was a revolution in um, February of mm -hmm. 1917 where they basically there was a popular revolt against the Tsar, and the Tsar effectively had lost power, and that Russia was descending into anarchy, and Lenin spotted his opportunity to sneak in there and uh, take over the power vacuum. So the October Revolution is essentially a kind of communist coup taking control of the revolutionary forces. But uh, the whole revolution wasn't a communist one. And I think that's uh, another thing that is lost um, by people not knowing history well enough. Like, hmm. it, it's not like millions and millions of people were for the communist revolution. It is that millions of people were not for the Tsar. And Lenin snuck in there and took the reins of uh, you know, anarchy and chaos to produce communism out of it. Right. Okay. Does that make um, sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, sense, yeah. So, with with level of insanity, I think this really could have been better termed um, uh, ideological commitment or something like that. How much of an ideologue the person was. And I was well, going to think that that was, well. I mean, you know, yeah. I was going to keep say. in mind that we've we've still got people like Idi Amin to come and whatever. Um, <laughs> so, <Yes. laughs> Um, so, so you can you can see where we're going here with level of insanity. Um, now, do we actually categorize Vladimir Lenin as insane? So, in order to do that example you used before, um, would we think that Vladimir Lenin would be heading to the Arkham Asylum, or would they just stick him in a regular prison? He, he'd be going to Blackgate without doubt. Um, I mean, as an example of Lenin's uh, sanity. He basically figured out after being in power for a couple of years that socialism was kind of bollocks. Like they couldn't, <laughs> like he was like, hold on a second. It's actually really difficult to run factories. We need to bring in managers. We need engineers. We need, 
like the workers are shit. We need like people who know what they're doing here. Um, and uh, it's really funny if you compare the sort of stuff Lenin was saying in like 1915, 1916, and compare it to the sort of stuff he was saying in 1923, where he was trying to effectively simulate a free market because they were struggling to <laughs> devise prices and so on. Um, so late Lenin basically tries to, I don't know, he, he's got all these really bullshit things saying like, it's not really against the uh, spirit of communism to have markets, guys. Uh, we, 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 <laughs> so we need some managers. Uh, you so, a solid one then, because that's rational. That's, he's that, pretty rational, I would say, yeah, Lenin. That's, yeah, no, no, Lenin, you, you get, uh, you, well, a good score on that one. So he's, so since, he's already worked out that it doesn't work, but he can't and um, can't admit to it because he's already committed himself fully to it. Yeah, yeah. It, and, it, and it let's, was, be, yeah let's be fair. I mean, it's it not was, like he's a kind of tragic historical figure. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, he leapt him with both feet and then realised he was up to his neck. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, Lenin. <laughs> Maybe you should have thought about that in advance. Um, so, sense of style, then. I think really he's not nothing much out of the ordinary, isn't he? I mean, well, you know, I mean one that, or two. His little beard, he's dressed in suits, you know. It's in, in the in the BBC thing I saw, he was wearing like a smart suit, and just before he went to give his famous speech in 1917, he kind of sneaks on that little worker's cap. So, so yeah. part of his kind of dowdy image is by so design. On, on what you are saying, yeah, is he a yeah. politician who managed to pull off looking like an intellectual? Hmm. I, I actually think he was. I, I think he was basically an intellectual, quote unquote, who tried to like give himself working class appeal, or because you know, like most socialists, these guys were just like middle. They were hmm. they were neat essentially. They were yeah. All of the revolutionaries were um, you know idealists. They're the same the same people who are socialists now. You know, like your uh, your little mate M M M Muke, uh Sargon. I mean. It's same sort of background, and um, I actually think that a lot of his image was trying to make him see self feel like less of an elite in some way or less oh, of a absolutely. I mean, like it's like with Che Guevara, he was a doctor. It's like, oh, wow, it's just, just one of the working poor being a doctor back in the uh, early 20th century. Christ, these are like all of these people are complete charlatans, and and Corbyn even does it now. Corbyn wears that oh, yeah. flat cap, yeah. you know, so. So, uh, I, well, what were we going to give him for style? Three, two. Uh, we give him I mean, a three. On, on, a, on a scale yeah. with uh, some of the capes. He, he wears nice waistcoats and ties. And, <laughs> you know, he's, 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 he's a well cut man, you know. Has this man, does this man possess a despot bonus trait? I mean, yeah, he, I, I, th I think it would be his just like opportunism more than anything else. His, his ability to kind of spot a gap and. Exploit it. Um, right, okay, then. Here, here's the Corbyn seal of approval. Then. <laughs> it's going to be Corbyn, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's the despot bonus trait. Are you endorsed by Jeremy Corbyn? <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. Okay. Let's, uh, Where let's are we going see. from here? Yeah, who, who are we pulling out of the hat next? Let's have a look. Oh, here's, here's one for V. Ceausescu. Oh, here we go. Okay. Oh, well, yes. Now, yes, he, he okay, definitely is one of my favourites. Yeah, yeah. What's, um, what's his body count? Let me just have a quick look at Trochescu. Uh It's actually a question mark. I couldn't find. I couldn't find any data on Trochescu's uh, okay. killings. I, I found out that he is accused of sixty thousand. That was in his trial. So basically, mm. you know that show trial they did, in which they quickly got rid of him. Yeah. Many better than Castro. It's, it's heavily dis the, the reason I didn't put that down is because it's heavily disputed. Yes, yes, and it is. It's, um, it's all related to how many people died in the struggle when he was overthrown, which which yeah. isn't quite. I mean, that's not like proper gulag, is it? No, no, not really. Although I was speaking to V about this, and he was saying that basically the Romanians are effectively like national socialists within the communist bloc. They're very nationalistic despite being trapped in the Soviet Union. Well, I mean, they, they found themselves on the wrong side of the war while the war was going on, didn't they? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, what, what can you tell us about Trochet? Because other than that massive, gaudy palace that he built, I don't know that much about him. Honestly, I'm not a, I'm not a particular expert on him. 
So well, when, I, it, when it comes to Ceausescu, uh, when it comes, for example, to that um, massive gaudy palace, uh, was it Palace yeah. of the People or whatever they, they yeah, like to always call it? I, he I was, it. It became infamous because he insisted that every single thing in that palace must be made in Romania. So it must be a kind of showpiece of what Romania can do. Romania first. But you have to understand <laughs> that if you, for example, therefore you need some taps, and there is no factory that makes taps. You and and you just normally you just import all your taps from, from Hungary or Poland. So that means that you actually have to build an entire factory just to make the taps for that one palace and then close the factory down because there is no need for it. So <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to see approach. the problem with communism and dictators. That shows you the approach. Um, and also, I mean, I looked up because I remember very clearly, you know, when he was overthrown, you know, the, the Securitate, you know, his security forces, they went completely gaga. And uh, there was these images of pretty much cars just driving past demonstrators, just gunning down people randomly. Um, it says here on, if you look up Securitate on Wikipedia, it says at its height, the Securitate employed some 11,000 agents and half a million informers mm -hmm. for a country with a population of 22 million in 1985. So in a population of 22 million, there are half a million informers. So that gives you an idea. It kind of touches upon what I was mentioning before. It's not always the body count. It can be that kind of, you know, grip that they have on the country. Yeah, you definitely could have had um, sort of an oppression rating. Rather than body, rather than hard numbers. Or rather the thing than is, though, if, sanity, I think, maybe. Yeah. But, uh, an oppression he did rating. Have quite an iron grip. He, did, he did have quite a level of control over Romania. Hmm. Um, wasn't it the case that people, when he was building that palace, that people were... Uh, basically, like starving and things when he was. Oh, yeah. uh, yes. And he would. It was have, a communist uh, country. I think we can just take that as a ground. He would have mm -hmm. uh, sort of harvest, uh, you know, shots of him going to inspect the harvest. And they were all fake. They were all fake uh, vegetables and fruit. Oh, and of course, you wouldn't be able to tell them. <laughs> and he would be <laughs> there. Oh, that's them so and dark. <laughs> and pointing to the, all the cabbages and potatoes and whatever that were laid out before him. And it was completely, all, everything so was completely fake. It, it was essentially like North Korea, but a European version. <laughs> and I think he also had a, a rather um, an angry turn on some uh, Hungarian minority. Um, you know, uh, Transylvania in, mm -hmm. yeah. um, in Romania, that they are actually heavily populated by ethnic Hungarians. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think they also had quite a lot of trouble once the communist regime came in, that they were even forbidden from speaking their Hungarian language in their own private homes. And of course, if you've got half a million informers around, um, it, you, you begin realizing why that would be significant and not just a kind of, um, a, a kind of you know, a boast. Hmm. But it would mean that basically, if our informers hear you speaking Hungarian in your own house, we'll come get you. That's pretty scary stuff, man. It's one way to keep the uh, employment numbers full, though. You know, just well, like it, it's it's also anyone who's possible. unemployed, make them an informer. It's also worth, of course, mentioning that with us three here being British, um, Ceausescu has a somewhat embarrassing British connection. I don't because know, I there was a state visit where President Ceausescu came to visit Great Britain, and uh, we gave him the full red carpet treatment. And oh, not, right. only give, did, not, not only did we give him him the full red carpet treatment, but I think the um, the Whitehall diplomats had worked out that his wife was a pharmacist or something, so we made sure that she got an honorary doctorate. Oh God. So, yes, wow. we really went uh, whole hog in um, obsequiousness when the Ceausescu's came to visit. And it's, it's, one of those, it's one of those episodes we would quite like to forget. Who was the Prime yeah. Minister? Uh, I, I, really don't, I, I really don't remember. Um, it's, it's, it's more than likely scarred me that much that there are certain, certain parts that I'm trying to blank out. But so, yes, it, it was quite a sort of looking back, it's quite a debacle, yes. Yeah. Um, but to be fair, a lot of countries host a lot of foreign diplomats for political reasons. So, 
you know, uh, foreign leaders, sorry, for political Oh, reasons. yes. Yeah, so, no, I mean, yeah. You know, like giving someone an honorary doctorate. Yeah, okay. But what did we want in return, you know? <laughs> I'm just thinking now, uh, it would have been James Callahan, the Labour leader. That just makes me. Uh, <laughs> just makes me <laughs> Imagine my shit. So, are, are you. Pro uh, 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 is, is Sargon now already preparing the a portrait of James I've Callahan? Got it just, I've got it in a different uh, paint pad because uh, so, I'm just going to copy and paste it over. But yeah, he was a socialist dictator. So yeah, he's going to get one too. Um, but body count of one, uh, what one or two? Probably one. I mean, yeah, if one can't really give him that high. He hasn't even broken yeah. hundred thousand. His longevity is middling. He's a very middling dictator. Middling? Middling. He was he was in office for forty years, wasn't he? Yes, he was around a long time. So I think okay. we have yeah, to give him. We have to give him a nine or something like that, surely. Whoa, well, I didn't know that he started in the sixties. Sorry, I didn't. Uh, shows what I know. Yeah, 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 like yeah. <laughs> so yeah, twenty-four years. So that's pretty well, good. You've got to be um, with the with his you know with his fall, the, the the moment when it happened. I mean, it was just a it was a wonderful moment. It's he he was holding a speech on a balcony, and you know the crowd were there and they were all supposed to you know cheer and yeah. wave socialist flags and whatever, and it just started going wrong. And it's you know they started booing him and they started chanting against him and whatever. And oh really? He I went uh... from the strong man visibly in front of you to this kind of feeble old man who was kind of holding his arms out trying to kind of quiet him down and no one was listening anymore oh dear and yes that was the moment in a way that ceausescu fell um and it was caught on camera and he was standing on a balcony trying to hold one of his grandiose speeches well, in the way you see him here on this photograph we have to uh we have to mark him down somewhere for that because that like stalin would never have stood for that if it, if it was somebody like a Stalin, he would just be like, no, you're going to clap. <laughs> and he just, I think he'd just stop and ice out the crowd enough for them to stand up and clap eventually. Uh, so to, we've got to penalise him somewhere on this card for... for He's just, he should have a low level of insanity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, looking at, I'm looking at him when he was younger, and um, he kind of looks like a kind of gay Hollywood star when he, when he was in his younger days. He, he actually does, doesn't he? I'll get a picture of him. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, he's got that yeah. kind of, uh, you know, golden era Hollywood. Yeah, he does. I think you're people. being a bit harsh on Hollywood here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I can see what you're saying. I can see it. He, you know, I think he, he looks as if he might be sort of one of the junior Weinstein brothers on that picture. Um, <laughs> but, but I'm not sure that he would kind of. So let's uh, let, let's get to the insanity. Is is the most insane thing that he's done built a palace from things made entirely in Romania, that for which there was no production facility in Romania. Yeah. Yes, but, I think that's pretty much the most gaga thing he did. Yes. I mean, what's that? A three or four? That's not the I mean, most. I think it was one of the biggest buildings in the world when it was actually erected. Taps. So it, it, you know, <laughs> it gives you it gives you a sense of scale that um you yeah. know. We need to we need to found a mosaic factory and train all the staff because we need some mosaics in the on on the palace floors, and then let's close the factory down again. I you know, think three. Um, he's he's obviously more insane than Lenin, so we should yeah, give him three. Yes, I think so. Yes, sense of style. So, someone in the chat said he's very carry on. <laughs> yes, yes, I can see that. <laughs> yes, so uh, whoever that was in the style. chat has just put this into my mind of, of Ceausescu standing there going, ooh, matron. <laughs> but, uh, Some of the chance, like, I bet Sulla is like an extra rare card. It's like, dude, Sulla did nothing wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> so in a sense of style, he's, he's I mean, you, you already rate him as a Hollywood heartthrob, so... Well, um, I, I don't know if he'd be like a romantic male lead, but he, he'd be the sort of chap who might crop up in a Marx Brothers film or something. You know, he kind of I don't know. He looks like he could be in an old old movie. Um, so you want to give him a three or a four, or something like that. I want to give him a three. Yeah, I, my feeling on Ceausescu is that he's a rather mediocre dictator all round. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, about three. I guess he was like. And then what's his uh, despot bonus? Is he still gonna? Is he still still gonna live on this palace as his bonus trait? Or well, I mean, he's he's definitely endorsed <laughs> yeah. by the Labour Party. Um, <laughs> so, uh, beyond that. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the idea that any socialist gets a little Corbyn. Yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. 
<laughs> All right, what's next in your bag then? Uh... Uh, let's have a look. Who who do I like? Oh, oh we gotta go for a classic. I do. Do you know what I love about Mussolini? Is that he looks like he's from the film Starship Troopers. <laughs> 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 uh, have you ever actually seen? Have you seen footage of Mussolini? He's quite yeah. a character. Yeah, he's yeah, quite he's, a... he's... <laughs> yeah. I love well, the body uh... count. I think this is pretty much he's a zero, isn't he? I right. Think so this, on that. this was really surprising when I was well, putting then, this together. Yeah. Then again, yeah. In brackets, you've got a bit of a, got a bit okay. of a bonus so there. Haven't the you? official Mussolini body count. Get ready for this. John. Four hundred. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That is legitimately amazing to me from a man who looks like he could probably have killed them all with his bare hands. I mean, that is the hell, that is a hell of a jaw. <laughs> just on that expression. I mean, scare them all to death. What the? <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. Yeah, 400. However, uh, <laughs> however, um, in brackets, I've got plus 400,000 when he decided to go over to Abyssinia. AKA modern day no, Ethiopia. No, no. Foreign conquests don't count. Yeah. So we're not counting foreign conquests, but we should note that he did kill 400,000 Ethiopians who were yeah, but it, you know, again, armed it's, with melons and things. Uh, it's one of those things that we don't want to start sitting there and comparing numbers with, really, isn't it? It's like right. everything the Italians did everything worse than us. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? What's really, what's really uh, weird about the Abyssinia thing, right? So it's, li I mean, it's, I don't know if you, uh, you guys play Sid Meier's uh, Civilization at all, yeah. but you know, it's like yeah. when you've, you, when you've reached the point where you've got tanks, and like there's still like some enclave somewhere with the, with the, the phalanx or the, yeah. the spearmen from, and so there's literally a war like that. He had tanks, and they had and they effectively spearmen or whatever. <laughs> and it still like took them ridiculously long to it didn't take two wars with them losing the first one. Yeah, or was that pre Mussolini? They still lost uh yeah. the battles and things. How bad is the Italian army? Like to, like that's a shame. That that should yeah. have been like a one day war. Like to, to be further, I mean it's it's since the fall of the Roman Empire that's ever been the way in Italy. Oh, you know, well, I mean in the First World War they were actually quite a decent force. Really? No, no, the problem isn't the fighting men, it's the leadership. You know, it's, uh, it's always always been stupid delusions of grandeur. Even back in like Machiavelli's day, he was saying, look, the soldiers are fine, our commanders are shit. It's you know, what's changed? But, so um, can we agree that the body count is a zero? Yeah, he gets a zero. Yeah, he gets a zero. That's the so longevity. Yeah. He started in nine in 1922, isn't it? That's when he came to power. And, and he, what does he get to like 43? I want to say. For... Yes, but by that time he had he was strictly speaking just a Roman pu a German German puppet. Um, at what I, point did he actually, you know, because the Germans had to yeah, save him we, from some mountain top at some point, didn't they? Yeah, but that, that doesn't change the fact that he was still. They, yeah. they relocate to a place called Salo. Um, where, where I actually went, I actually I stayed in Lake Garda about a month ago, and I drove past Salo, and it was quite traumatic for me because there's a um, there's a film called Salo or 120 Days of Sodom. Oh yes, I think that's quite a famous one for censorship. By, uh, yes, Pasolini, and um, I swear to God, I watched that once, and I felt like polluted. I felt like it kind of tainted my soul. I was sick at least once watching it. It is horrific. If you want, um, if you want horror, if you want Halloween horror, what, what just watch Sallow. You'll never forget it again. It's just <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm checking the Wikipedia stats. He became the uh, the Duke of Fascism in 1919. In Luce, yes. Yeah. Right. Uh, so and that lasts until 1945. So 26 years. It's at least an eight, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty pretty good for. Well, give him a, give him a seven. It's not an eight. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so level of insanity. How insane could this guy really have been? Well, he was known for his very theatrical speeches. Um, yeah, his nice. kind of strange body mannerisms. He was very macho. Um, yeah, he was histrionic, but he was also Italian. That we yeah. have to consider that. So I don't. I don't. I mean, my old history teacher always used to say Mussolini was a halfwit. That was that was his. Uh, but I don't know if halfwit. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, he he did like going on his um, imperial uh, adventures, didn't he? You know, 
um, which kind of got him into trouble with the British in North Africa. And, and <laughs> That's our job. Come, and, you know, so <laughs> it, it, you kind of it, you kind of did realise that it, to a certain extent, yes, he didn't seem to quite understand what he was dealing with at times, and it, what his actual what his actual force was. So to a certain extent, yes, there did seem to be a bit of a detachment from reality with him. Hmm. I, w in, I mean, it is like let's so, just pretend that you were trying to look for a bit of empire in you know the 1930s. Most of the map is taken. <laughs> I mean, is Abyssinia that bad? Do you think as a tactical decision? I mean, yes, there was nothing in Abyssinia for him to take. <laughs> but like, where else are you going to go? Like the British, the British, or the French? Yeah, the it costs more to take Abyssinia than you'll ever but reap in revenue from it. The the example I would use is: um, Have either of you ever heard of the Antonine Wall? Yeah. Um, so so basically, north of Hadrian's Wall in Britain. Yeah, the wall above Hadrian's Wall. Yeah. So everyone's heard of Hadrian's Wall, but the Romans at some point pushed further north and yeah. pretty much built a wall between Edinburgh and Glasgow because it's a much shorter stretch. Shorter distance, yeah, yeah. But it stretched, it stretched their communications. Everything became much more difficult to get up there. And if you ask yourself what that was of use to the Roman economy is between Hadrian's Wall and you know Glasgow and Edinburgh. Absolutely nothing. It's that's the reason that they didn't. Territory. That's the reason they didn't properly pacify Scotland. They went up there, genocided a few tribes, and then realised there was absolutely nothing of value. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, they, love, they, I love the idea that Scotland is literally too shit to conquer, and, yeah. and that's why they just basically turned round eventually and walked away from it. And they did the same thing with Germany. Yeah. Um, and and I think that is what we're driving out here with Abyssinia. Certain things are just not worth conquering because there's Absol nothing there. Absolutely not. Ab Abyssinia was, well, Abyssinia. It, 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 there was nothing there, and and this was, this was um, commented on by like economists at the time. I was, what was, yeah, it was that vampire economy. He he also spoke a lot about Mussolini's Italy because a lot of the um, correspondence was between Germans and Italians, and that was something he brought up in that. It, it just. There was just no need for it. But it was all pride. It was all national pride. It was all to say, oh, look, Italy's a world power. Look at us with it's our symbolism. colonial empire. Yes. So, so okay, we'll give him, yeah. what, a five? Yeah, yeah four. I wanna... four. Yeah, give him a four. Yes. Okay. Give the poor man a four. All right. Sense of style. So this is an area where I think that he could be quite a good card. Like, you know, like when you actually play top trumps, there'd be some cards that were generally poor, but they'd have one good stat. I want to say this yeah. might be Mussolini's one big stat. Where I agree with you. Hang on, hang on. He's already got a longevity of seven. Well, yeah, no, I, I, mean... I, I agree with you. Uh, I would just like to explain why. Because when we were looking at his photographs before, and you basically said, you know, look at that jaw. This man could, could uh, strangle them all with his bare hands. That was exactly the impression he wanted to give. He, he was determined to be this kind of man who looked like a rock. Yeah, you have to understand, he was um, he was a journalist, so in a way he was he was the man who understood the media and understood how to manipulate one's public image and one's public impression. So in that regard, he was he was quite a bit quite quite far ahead of his time. Now, because he was then in a way eclipsed later by much more powerful dictators, who didn't use that language of, of imagery in the same way, he ended up looking a bit like a buffoon. Hmm. But yeah. when he was the first man to do it, that imagery actually had a power all of his own, that he was kind of this kind of rock-like person that could not be shaken, and he represented the power and the state and the order. and. That's why the Italian was so the Italians were so drawn to him, and yeah. it, it was a sort of theatre that he was playing in that regard in order to provide this image to them. Okay, okay, okay. So what, what, what <laughs> also, in, in he, five? He, we should also say though he was famous for, and I don't know how, if this is going to. Uh, he was basically famous for, um, say, like they were building a road somewhere, and there were guys with pickaxes and so on. Mm. Mussolini was famous for the photo op where he'd come along 
and he'd make out like he'd been like you know he he'd basically go there and pose for three seconds with a pickaxe. Oh, just to, just to check that man, you know what? I fucking hate those photo ops more than anything. Like, not only is it incredibly condescending, as if anyone in the country actually thinks that. Like, I saw Boris Johnson do one where he was shoveling some sand. It's like <laughs> Boris, right? For a start, you're you're too old to be shoveling sand, my son. Right? You've got you're too much of a fucking hunchback. No one thinks that you've been doing this for more than two seconds. But secondly, you're not paid to shovel sand, Boris. You're paid to fucking be the foreign secretary or whatever it is you do. You know, that's not your fucking job. Why are you shoveling sand? Don't you have something more important to be doing with your time? <laughs> Well, so, I mean, what we're saying really is he's the Tony Blair of the 1920s. <laughs> Jesus. But, I mean, what, what Mussolini would do, though, he, he'd kind of make out that he'd been doing backbreaking work. Like, he'd, he'd kind of, like, you know, put his hand to his side or mop his brow, even though he'd been there for, like, literally 30 seconds. Um, Interest, interesting fact. Uh, M- Mussolini has a lower body count than Tony Blair. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, true enough. Yes. <laughs> no, <right. laughs> true. So, um, what about his influence on the likes of, say, Putin? You know, like Putin does all the uh, like the you know, back, you know horseback stuff and you know bareback on the yes you know, he yeah. wrestles a bear or whatever. That's the sort of stuff. Mostly, mostly <laughs> would also. I strongly <laughs> agree. Yes, that that's where. It okay, comes we'll from. Gi- we'll give him a what an eight. Oh, I want to say an eight. Yeah. Well, Seven. Go ahead, yeah. Let's give him an eight. Give him an eight. Okay. All right. In, in his day, he was an eight. But um, <laughs> the best one I don't know whether you can see that. But <laughs> can you get a little lick? Yes, there we go. Because <laughs> he's a fascist, so you know, Corbyn will be like, no, he's he's not the right kind of socialism. How dare he? I would, I would say sort of the de- that his despot bonus trait must be effectively being the blueprint. He was the first one. I just want to say one thing. I do quite. I. I mean, this might just be me, but I quite like the M Bison Sheik of the, of the. You know, it, as he is pictured here with mm-hmm. the uh, with the military hat and the the ranks and so on. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's no there's no doubt they they. I mean, it's just like with the the fucking stormtroopers, isn't it? You know, it's like, and the SS. It's like they they all they dress well for a reason. Yeah. Would you say that generally the fascists had a better sense of style than the, than, yeah. than the commies? Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Without, you know, the, without the fascists a doubt. didn't hate wealth, though. They didn't hate the existence of wealth. They just hated the fact that the Jews had it. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, so, shall, we, shall we move on? Yeah, 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 before we get into Jeremy Corbyn's arch nemesis. Oh, Christ, Not the Khomeini, obviously. I meant the Jews. Um, okay, yeah. Right, so this so, is another lightweight, yes. Yeah, I was going to say, his body count's got to be pretty low. So this is interesting. Um, Ayatollah Khomeini, 30,000. We're, wow. kind of ca- we're in kind of Castro area here. That's more than no. I expected, though. Okay, I mean, you've got to remember, when you have a violent revolution, like a lot of those would be early kind of old Shah guys and so on and so forth. However, he does get a plus 1.5 million through the Iran-Iraq war. Um, yeah, he didn't start that though, did he? We're not counting foreign no. uh, death, so no. And that, that wasn't even a war Iran started. So yes, but I think once once um, Saddam Hussein had been thrown back, one could easily have ended the war. But then Iran was the force that wanted to continue it. I, well, why wouldn't you? I'm oh, yes. sorry. No, no, if no, someone no. declares war on you, then they lose, and you invade their territory and take some of it. He was, unless he to go unless all you the way don't to... really have the means by which to do so, and you just start sending boys into minefields oh, okay. there for is the soldiers that. to follow. Yes, he, he wanted to go all the way to Baghdad, essentially to recreate the old Persian Empire. That's what. Uh, yeah, but you can probably have done the same. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, his longevity is not that good because he died in 1989 and he came in in 1979, so he's just got 10 years. He's got 10 years, but he was an old man, effectively, when he came to power. Yeah. And I'm quite sure that to um, the Iranians who didn't agree with him, those 10 years must have seemed an awful long time. Yep. True. I mean, they're they're still there now. I mean, this is the thing. It's like uh, his Khamenei, the guy after him, is still there. They've gone from Khamenei (laughs) to Khamenei. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Um, Who's who's kind of like the slightly less charismatic younger brother type thing? But he he is. Imagine like Fidel had died in 
uh, you know, 1969 and Raul Castro had been the leader ever since. It's kind of like that. He's like the Raul, mm. the Raul Castro. So of the... for 10 years, what are we going to give him? <sighs> um, Three? Three? Four? Uh, well, four. Give him a four. Give him a four, yeah. Level of insanity. <laughs> well, okay, so, okay. so there's, there's a lot to consider here. The man literally thinks that the apocalypse begins with the slaughter of the Jews. Um, yep. He literally thinks that women are second-class citizens, but that could just be my liberal bias talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, w I wouldn't want to invalidate his cultural beliefs or anything. Uh, he <laughs> believed in hanging and stoning for gays. He believed in, like, the literal truth of the Quran, I presume. Um, yep. He, uh, he thought America was the great Satan. Uh, is he wrong, though? Is he wrong? The Iranians speak, speak of America as the great Satan and Britain as the little Satan. Ah, oh, what? Um, oh, when, it, when it comes to um, level of insanity, we also need to consider that he was quite keen on war with, you know, an out and out war with, with Israel. Yes, there, there was that as well. He wanted True, to drive them into the I, sea. Hang yes. on, hang on. Yeah, but, but that's, that's not actually insane from his point of view. I mean, that's in his mind. That's like a logical reaction to colonialism. Yeah, I mean, they they he, to, to be fair, that they're not that keen on the old Jews. The um, weird the, the mothers. It's, it's, well, yes, but I mean, Israel has been, been the really foremost. Progressive. Israel has been the foremost Middle Eastern power um, yeah. for decades now. Yeah. Well, so the, this sort of like hatred of Israel. What I'm saying is, it's not irrational. It's geopolitical. So I don't think that's yeah. an insane thing necessarily. I mean, let's be honest with you. If we could, if we could somehow push Germany into the sea, let, we'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> My dear German friends, um, he's got a rank. It's at least a seven, isn't it? Yeah, it's got to be. A yes, seven. he he must have a decent rank. Yes, he's not an out and out ten. He's he's not a complete madman. But um, yes, it, it, it cannot be seen as the most rational regime that's ever been around. Yeah. <laughs> Sense of style. So I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I see, like. He's got like what I would call evil mage chic or evil wizard kind of vibes. <laughs> <laughs> that's really racist. Yes, How he, dare he you can easily he can dress to be play? Evil. You know those those um th those Sindbad films and whatever. He does look remarkably made, like in, Jafar. In the 1960s and 70s. He could easily be the sort of evil wazir. <laughs> he he's, he genuinely looks like an evil wizard. Or yes. like an evil, he's or Jafar, Jafar. Jafar. wins. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I don't know how to, how do we, like, he, he certainly rocks it. He owned his look. So well, yeah, but it's he's pretty standard. Also that, he's also got that sort of patriarch look, hasn't he? That kind of, you know, the furrowed brow and the kind of... You know, he, he looks this like he could be what, frown at the populace. He's got something the likes of he's got something the likes of Mussolini and the other people that we've seen haven't got. I mean, he, he has. Just, the, sorry, I, go ahead. I, I was going to. He's got that kind of look of. Um, he looks like he could be wise. That you'd look up to. He's he's like a genuine patriarch. He, okay, he looks of, like he could be a reaction gif. Well, can I can I can <laughs> can I say something that would really really get under his skin? He has a look of Moses about him. <laughs> no, no, no. Moses is in the Quran. That wouldn't get. Yeah, he's in the Quran. Yeah. I've just it. thought. I've just thought that. Wouldn't Sean Connery make a great like? <laughs> yes, he would. Yeah. <laughs> Sean Connery would be a great comedian. <laughs> um, yeah, he's he's definitely got angry Middle Eastern man down. That's <laughs> evil wizard. Yeah. Okay. 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 Right. I I want to give him reasonably high, but so what, that's just me because it's also unique as well. Like, I mean. Yeah, this is not an icon all of itself, all of itself, isn't he? So what a six? Are we talking? Let's give him a seven. A seven for his sense of style. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for an old wizard. You've got to but you've got to remember how much they respect a beard in the Middle East. I'm not even joking. They really do like Okay, you know, that's true. And he did he did have quite a good beard. All right. Fine. <laughs> the Americans never tried to send him any cigars, so his his okay. beard would fall so out. Bonus despot. Have you got a little Salman Rushdie to put there? <laughs> Maybe you're <laughs> no, no, Salman Rushdie did nothing wrong. Um who who do we actually need? Linda Sansor, that's who we need. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair though, she'd probably be like, oh my god, he's a sheer, shut up, you bigot. And I'd be like, yeah, okay. Yeah, but is, is he only a Shia just because um, Sean Connery can't say his S's? <laughs> Could be. But, um, 
Yeah, you can have a Linda Sasso. Uh, Linda Sasso's face. God. She's, I swear to God, she's annoying to just look at. She's just got this fucking expression on her face that just screams entitlement to me. It just annoys the fuck. I, I, do, uh, I do understand what you mean, yes. But one tries not to be triggered. Yeah. Because um, that would be playing it their way. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, <laughs> but Shari are approved there. Well done, Kamini. Right. <laughs> Who have we got next? So which horrible person shall we go with next? <laughs> oh, Jeremy Coleman. No. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's get well, to... I mean, let's get the chamber of horrors, Daddy. really, we've got Come here, on. isn't it? Come on, fucking... The big guns are coming out. The Daddy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I mean, Chairman Mao surely has a higher body count, but he's got to be a nine, isn't he? Just... So, sorry, I'm back. I, uh, I keep on getting... You, the... you, you just sort of abandon us there. I keep on getting these blue screen crashes all the time. Uh, so I'm back oh. uh, briefly on my iPad. Um, to to give you a quick rundown, that means your computer's fucked. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I keep on having this uh, issue. Um, so, well, with, um, so if we want to jump in with uh, Uncle Joe, as we all know him. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, you know, we were talking body count, and um, I'm, I'm looking at your little list here. Yes. And... That's uh, where he actually appears to be ahead of Chairman Mao. He was the, think, he was our top Trump essentially. Yes, wow, which really? basically took us all by surprise, really, because we all thought that surely Chairman Mao yeah. um, would have to be tops. Isn't the okay. number eighty? Eighty? Uh, no, we've got sixty million for 60 Joseph million. Stalin. Right, Jesus. And this is not including war deaths or anything like that. This is just, you know. Well, have a, have a solid 10 on that, Stalin. I, I should mention that uh, I, a couple of nights back, I went to see The Death of Stalin, uh, which is currently in the cinemas. And um, it got me thinking about, you know, we were talking about like pro-commie bias in the media and so on. Yeah. How many felt like I was, it's a comedy film. Um, but Stalin is featured in it. He, he, he dies. Spoilers. Um, and he's, you know, he's pretty ruthless. Like he, he will just kind of. He's depicted as killing people arbitrarily. You know, he's got lists of like death yeah. lists, and and all of this is completely accurate. Um, and um, it made me think. Basically, apart from that, I have never seen the Soviet High Command featured prominently in a film. And it made me think, like, how many films have even had, like, depicted that? Mm. I not showing, like, generic Russian commie soldiers. Yeah, because but... all of the Nazi ones do. You know, they're all, they're all famous figures in their own right in the Nazi High Command. Yeah, but, yes. I mean, in terms of seeing, like, Molotov and, uh, you know, Bira and Khrushchev, uh, Khrushchev mm. and all these guys, um, really there's not many films at all. <laughs> and I went and had a look, and there's another comedy film called Red Monarch from, like, 1983, and there's another like obscure TV film, but mm. essentially there's never been a film that seriously. Oh, and there's one. There's a TV movie starring Robert Duvall called Stalin. <laughs> um, so but, uh, it, Bi yeah. Binary Surfer has a question: Was Corbin and weeping in the back row? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I tell you, I mean, I'm not even joking here. My main takeaway from the death of Stalin, and I recommend that everybody go to watch it. But the 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 best scenes in the film are the uh, the Polit the Politburo meetings, mm -hmm. and for me, the the way those meetings go is like a, an insight into the mind of the average leftist, because <laughs> there's there's always a correct line in the room, and they're all kind of watching each other to know what the correct line is, and yeah. that is basically all leftist thinking, like all all of it. Um, it's there, good thing. It's, it's all, the, it's, yeah. that that's a direct consequence of collectivism because you have to understand what everyone else fucking thinks. It's so, very very interesting film. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh shit! Was I was going to say something then, but it's just gone. It was from one of the chats, but I've completely forgotten it. Sorry, chaps. Um, but when it comes to you know those death lists and whatever you were talking about, yeah. I mean, what Stalin was famous for was that he would effectively get these reports, say, once a week or so, in which they would kind of um, report how many, you know, how, how many sort of uh, anti-revolutionaries or whatever had been picked up 
uh, enemies of the state had been picked up in the various Soviet republics. And if he didn't like the figure, he would just basically cross out the figure and say, um, 500 more. Um, that would just be communicated back to that particular Soviet Republic, and they would just have to find 500 more dissidents. What? Oh, God, God, whether they, whether they actually knew who to arrest or not. No, but I love yeah. the idea that he's just sat there going, you know what, that's not enough people dead. I don't look terrifying enough. Kill yeah. some more people just so I look worse. It, it is, men, like, it, those lists that he was talking about, it would literally be like, eliminate 25 percent of this area here um you know i'm skipping to... straight to the <laughs> okay yeah, <carry laughs> but when we need to... well but i so, think in that yeah. regard stalin understood something about um <laughs> about terror about fear Qu quality has a quantity all of, uh, quantity has well, a quality all its, its own yeah absolutely its... people uh, you know if 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 the fear is if the threat is rational you can try to reason with it Hmm. So you will be afraid of it, but you will try to stay on its good side. You will try to, but if the fear is, if the threat to you is completely irrational, there is no way in which you can actually deal with it and know yourself to be safe. Yeah, you are yeah. held in a perpetual state of fear. There's two. There's two amazing instances in that film last night. I don't know if they're made up or not, but to illustrate the sort of fear we're talking about. Early on, like right as the film starts, there's this concert going on, and Stalin wants it. Um, Stalin puts in a call, and he wants it um, recorded. <laughs> but obviously, they didn't record it. So basically, they keep everyone back, and they they, they go and get this conductor out of his bed, and they basically everybody has to do the entire performance again because Stalin wanted it recorded. Um, yep. so, so that's that's one part of his uh, uh, oh. tyranny. The, I, I, sorry, go ahead. The other thing they do is um, there's this ongoing joke throughout it where Khrushchev's wife keeps a, like when Khrushchev goes home, he goes through all of the conversations he had with Stalin, and she notes if he laughed or not. Like what was his reaction? What was his reaction? So he knows next time <laughs> not to say the things that got a bad or a middling reaction from Stalin. So because he he would just kill you. He'd put you on the list and you'd be gone. So um, okay, then let's yeah. um. Well, I think we've established that he's the top Trump on the body count. So let, his longevity then. So 30 years, that's pretty good. As dictators go, that's actually quite a good rating, yes. It's, yeah. Is it even longer than that? No, well, in office, 30 years, apparently. 24 to 53? 22 to 52, Wikipedia 22 says. 22 to 52? Okay, yeah. fair enough. So um, yeah, yeah, give him a good, what, seven or eight? Eight. Eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But one of one of my favourite things that I heard about him was we've all more than likely seen that piece of footage where he is in a, he he's standing in a theatre, and they all you know they all get up when they see that Comrade Stalin has arrived, and they all start applauding, mm. and nobody wants to be the first one to sit down, um, and you know because everybody knows if if you're the first one to sit down, then that's you're the one who's disrespected him. So therefore, Jesus, yeah. they just basically continue clapping and clapping and clapping for ages. That's... Well, I heard recently that there was actually an even more ridiculous scenario in which at some meeting, um, somebody basically, you know, oh, and, and now please, if we could all show our respect for Comrade Stalin, and they all get up and start clapping. And this was just somewhere in Russia. He was not even there. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody wanted to sit down. Nobody wanted to see, be the first one to sit that... down. Yeah, everybody but... could see the security men around them eyeing everybody up. You, so you don't seem to understand, right? True equality. Like 20 minutes until eventually <laughs> someone sat down, some local factory owner sat down, and everybody else followed, knowing I've not been the first one. And guess what? The next day, the local factory owner was no longer there. So uh, someone's uh, put... I, I read at an autopsy that they found a brain tumor driving them crazy for the last, like, five years, and no one noticed. <laughs> 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 Because the thing is, I don't want to make Stalin just this absolute beast, but he is an absolute beast, and like, you know, he is, he he does seem to have been genuinely fucking like nuts. Well, didn't didn't Lenin? You know, when they were in the later dates of Lenin, when they were talking about who should succeed him, when someone suggested, well, what about Stalin? 
Lenin is supposed to have kind of been incensed and looked at him and gone, "Are you out? Are you out of your minds?" He's a Georgian <laughs> peasant. Uh, yeah, and on, famously on. Hold on, sorry. Famously on his. Uh, hold on. Um, this bloody iPad. You're in. You're in twice somehow. How do I? Uh, okay. Let me mute myself a second. And I can mute one of you, and you can talk on the other. <laughs> mute the the academic on the twins. <laughs> I, I muted the one on the right, actually. So the one on the we're, we're listening to the evil academic <laughs> agent here. <laughs> but yeah, so, I mean, uh, uh, he he seems to have been an absolute... Okay. I mean, just, you can't kill that many people and be sane. All right, that's better. Yeah, um, yeah I, I'm, I'm glad I'm the one on the right and not the one on the left. Um, so, <laughs> the, uh, the, the a couple of other things about him, okay. Um, he Famously, when he was giving speeches, he had a little buzzer. Did mm -hmm. you know about that? Where um, so people would clap, and he had a little buzzer on the bottom of his table, and he'd press it when he wanted applause, and then he'd press it again when applause would stop. Um, so that that is kind of that's some sick level of control. <laughs> the, the, know, British, kind of... the British party political conferences have been doing that ever since, have they? Yeah, I was going to say that just sounds like uh, yeah a typical conference. Uh, sorry, right? Okay, so level of insanity. We can't just give him another ten. That's He's a, he's got. I mean, that level of paranoia has got to have at least a nine. Oh, on, you do get yeah, really good cards and top crumbs. You do get like guys oh, who are I'll give him a nine. But Jesus Christ, this is this is nuts. Stalin. Oh, he's, he's the hard to beat card, isn't he? Yeah, but thankfully he's not hard to beat on style. Well, yeah. <laughs> hold on a second. Hold on. Oh, go on. Man. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> There's two things. First of all. I did discover uh, last night that Stalin, among other things, and this may even lower his insanity rating, but he was a massive film buff. He really loved films. And okay. when, um, when they conquered the Nazis, when the, uh, you know, the Allied powers defeated the Nazis, Stalin inherited Joseph Goebbels's film collection. <laughs> um, and um, he loved, he absolutely loved Westerns. And he loved gangster films, but he especially liked John Wayne films. But then, when he fit, when he found out that John Wayne did not like socialism, apparently in a drunken stupor one night, he accidentally ordered the assassination of John Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Russian agents basically flew over trying to kill John Wayne. And, when, and then when Khrushchev that came in, fantastic. <laughs> When Khrushchev came in, he obviously rescinded the order, you know, rescinded yeah, the order and apologized. But... Let, let's just, just to make this clear, you think that might lower his level of insanity? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but the fact he liked films. Um, the, the other thing is that he took an intense interest in cinema. He actually thought that cinema was the most important propaganda tool. Yeah. Well, he um, also had Eisenstein, didn't he? Yeah. So, he took an, he, so Eisenstein would be a famous example um, well, they all did. All of the dictators knew that propaganda was key to keeping control. So he used to like he, he used to go around and he gave advice like, you know, did, I'm just an observer. Don't listen to me. I'm just giving you advice, type thing. But it's like literally Stalin telling you yeah. this. Um, <laughs> and famously, he commissioned. So you get this now. He is literally Stalin, and he commissioned Eisenstein to make this uh, epic uh, film, Ivan the Terrible. <laughs> because he loved Ivan the Terrible and he wanted every, I mean, so they made part one and it kind of was quite popular. And then they made part two. Stalin watched it and wasn't happy with the depiction of Ivan the Terrible. He was like too romantic and like not fearsome enough. So, so he, he got, he got, he got Ivan the Terrible to shut down. Uh, and then Eisenstein died before he could. Okay. Finish. So I, 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 I think, I think we've got, to, look, I mean, look, Stalin was not a stylish guy. Right. I mean, all, all of this is like, like that mustache. No, absolutely not. And then stuffy old uniform. Nah, he's he, he's not cool. He's just. I think, I think that's that's the one weakness on this card, so isn't it? I just yeah. want to. Sorry, I, I don't want to keep on talking Stalin up. But my fiance, <laughs> my fiance, genuinely said Road for like, Corbyn. No, because we were having this. I I said a few weeks ago that we were going to do this, and um, she was like, "Who who was that?" And it was like a picture of Stalin when he was young. And then she was like, let me yeah. see some more. She was like, Stalin was pretty hot. And so then I went like, hold on a second. So I showed her like Castro and I showed her other dictators. And basically Stalin was the top Trump in terms of like hotness. <laughs> for... yeah. So apparently, you know, some women like Stalin. 
Um, <laughs> yes, but his actual public persona is is far from stylish as such. Yeah. You know, as he's we more like un avuncular, grandfatherly. Yeah, he, he gets a one. He's. But uh, you know, one thing struck me, and that was when you said. Um, you know, for one, that he's kind of going around saying, look, I only want to give you a piece of advice. Um, and at the same time, you also say he loved gangster movies. Yeah. Is this the ultimate godfather? Mm. Well, it, apparently, uh, there's there's one story where Khrushchev, because he the, the other thing he did is he used to force the other high command to watch movies with him. <laughs> 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 so, like, they'd all be ready to go home. And he's like, come on, just another film. And he's, you're not going to say no. Um I'm, and uh, I'm putting his level of intensity up to ten. <laughs> Everything you're saying is just like, holy. <laughs> but apparently, he'd be watching the gangster movies and then commenting on like great tactics of the gangsters and so on. So, <laughs> of course, he was. <laughs> okay, uh, so yeah, since the style, what we give him a two? Or one? Yeah, give him a two. I think that's that's about as much as we can grant him as such. And that's how you beat the card. You have to go sense of style to beat yeah, Stalin. Yes. That's yeah. that's. But luckily, almost anyone looks cooler than Stalin. Uh, so someone was asking for Pol Pot. Let me just find him. There's going to be a lot of ties if you go des uh, <laughs> bonus trait. It's just going to be like Corbin versus Corbin. Let <laughs> <laughs> me find Pol Pot. Oh, no, no, no. I've just, I've just come across. When it comes to despot bonus traits, does a Corbin beat a Nick Griffin? Or a Linda Sicily? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it depends on the people who play. <laughs> To be fair, yeah. Corbin has been way more successful than Nick Griffin. That's true. So yeah, he, he easily beats Nick Griffin. But um, it's time for El Presidente. Who else El thinks Presidente. Stalin? Who else in the chat thinks Stalin is hot? I just want to kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know how many people fancy Stalin. It's just I, not a weird question. I cannot believe we're having this conversation. <laughs> was Stalin thick? Absolutely. He was definitely a bit chubby in his later years. Oh. Um, so okay. Augusto Pinochet, Mr. Helicopter. Oh, yes. The, 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 the man, the meme, the legend. <laughs> <laughs> the best, I, I bet the best the all the not nearly as impressive as the socialists would make out, is it? No, let me uh, let me get up his... Uh, uh, do you have yeah, the figures uh, there? I'm, 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 see, I'm trying to find him here on this list. Um, let, me, let me see if I can get it up. I can't find him on this list. Pinochet body count. Here we are. Uh, did I forget to do Pinochet? I think you might have forgotten to put Pinochet on there. I don't really? think he's on here. That's surprising. Uh, okay, well, it's not. It's not that high. I seem to recall. Um, Let me just do some Google food. See if we can find it. We're in. We're in Castro territory. Yeah, I was going to say this is going to be. So we're in the tens of thousands, really. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, despite what... I mean, it's a one, basically. Despite what uh, communist... Ah, there we go. Done. So 30,000 people. Yeah. Right on oh, top. Very, any... very much in, in Castro territory, then. Right. Actually, no, it's even worse than Castro. Um, it's actually 30,000 human rights violations, which is 27,000 tortured, and only 2,279 uh, executed. There we go. So there aren't communists everywhere, I guess, so. Most of them were by well, most of them were by helicopter as well, which makes yeah. it even better. Better. <laughs> so when it so basically we're on a body count is a one, so he's a measly card here, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's not very impressive actually. But longevity, yeah. the really man held on for a long time, did he not? Did we give him a naught? Only twenty four years. Oh. Uh, yeah, we we gave um what the one that had less than a thousand a naught. Yeah, Mussolini got a naught. Okay, that's yeah. that's fair enough. That he's a yeah. one then. Yeah. Longevity. So the weird thing with him. Is that he? He gets to nineteen ninety, and then he he kind of clings on until ninety eight as like the chief of the army or something. So he kind of pensioned himself off. So yeah. he he effectively did a kind of Sulla or a Diocletian. Mm. So he is the strong man who is so strong that he can he eventually retires. walk away from it, which of course is what normally no dictator can do. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. impressive. That's impressive, actually. Yeah, that, so was that a... is that is quite impressive. Yes. Yeah. I think he famously used to go and have tea with Margaret Thatcher when they were both retired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one of the things the socialists never stop harping on about with Thatcher. There's, yeah. a, there's Democratic Socialist 01, that tiny, the small socialist yeah. YouTube channel. Yeah. He just, he's constantly harping on about Pinochet. It's like, dude, I literally don't give a fuck about Pinochet. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> 
<laughs> so it's because you love Margaret Thatcher. No, I don't love Margaret Thatcher. Holy shit. Um, yep. But yeah, okay, so okay, so it's actually so what a seven for his longevity? What did we give Stalin for his longevity? Because uh, he was an eight. That was about twenty something years, wasn't it? Eight. Yeah, we didn't give him an eight, haven't we? Um, we gave Stalin oh we did give him an eight. Okay, yeah. So in that case, I would give Pinochet a nine. I would give him an eight for the length of time he was in, but then a bonus for the fact that he could pension himself off. Mm. Mm. Level of insanity, Pr presumably fairly low with casualty figures like that. I think well, it's a, I think it's arguably a naught, but on the basis that, I mean, <laughs> he is the only dictator that we're uh, dealing with who advocated a sensible economic plan, which is free market <laughs> economics. <laughs> yes, but uh, I, I always. I always think there must be a level of insanity present in those people who get creative when it comes to killing people. I was going to say exactly that. I was, I was going to say that's that's it's true. Just not not using a firing line indicates, yeah, uh, creativity is the best way to describe it. So let, let's give him at least a one or a two. A one, okay, or two. That could two. be his like uh, that's that his Batman villain thing. Yes. Helicopter man. <laughs> <laughs> Sense of style. So. Oh, well, I'm going to strongly yes. argue. I'm going to strongly argue that Pinochet may be the top Trump for style. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he doesn't just rock the M Bison. Oh <laughs> shit! He has got like. Look at that. On honest to God, <laughs> can you pull up the? <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ! He, he is. Have you seen? Can you can you maybe see some of the ones where his cape, where he's wearing that amazing well, he's the cape on? He's doing the Count Dracula impression. He basically yeah. like walks across oh, his shit. troops and he's wearing like the best cape I've ever seen. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, 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 yes. yes. Well, I'm he's like, <laughs> the cape. I mean, come on! <laughs> it's, it's that one. It's yes. It's that picture. That's the one. Yes. <laughs> Just Count, Count Dracula inspects his forces. Yes. <laughs> so amazing. <laughs> If I could get away with wearing that cape, I would, I would wear that. I'd dress like that if I could. That is actually Down amazing. the high street wearing that, you would no, try to. Not entirely dissimilar to Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's the, the, the best ever. I think, oh, frankly, I think, frankly, Star Wars could be guilty of copyright infringement. <laughs> <to> be <honest. laughs> That's awesome. Oh, God, I, I didn't, oh, God, a modern cape. I've never seen one. But okay. uh, no, I mean, I think one can describe him in a way as the <laughs> ultimate peacock. <laughs> Just so awesome. Are we, are, we, are we giving him a 10 then? Because I mean, his, uh, his, his method of execution was rather meme worthy as well. I, I, uh, I can't, think, yes, yes I have to give him a 10. <laughs> okay, uh, let me... The despot bonus trait, it's, it's just being Mr. Helicopter. Uh, I'm, I'm actually <laughs> going to find a picture of Margaret Thatcher. Hang on. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, to be fair, that's, that is that's reasonable, isn't it? Let's be honest. <laughs> but of course, Sargon, that is only because you love Thatcher. Yeah, it's only because I love Thatcher. Of course. I'm, I'm just glad that we've established that. Yeah. Yes. As long as everyone's clear. I'm, I'm actually quite concerned about the level of Pinochet fanboyism in the uh, live chat at the moment. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not joking. He's, he's legitimately a legend on the internet. It's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, as dictators go, he was one of the least bad, so... It, you could yeah. have done worse. Well, I mean, put it this way, okay? Say what you want about um, the connection with the likes of Milton Friedman and so on. But he, I mean, he did put in the economic plan, raised kind of the standard of living generally, the GDP kind of... The dipped, ends justified the up. means, academic uh, agent. And, but, then, but then he does, in 1990, kind of give over to democracy and just become like, goes into that semi-retirement, I'll just head up the army, don't worry about me, guys. So, I mean, in a way, that's better than, like, it's better than what Castro did, which is essentially just yeah. hand the reins of power to his brother. And, and ruined the entire economy of the country. That's, that's oh, well, now, here we are. Everyone's yeah. favourite. I mean, yeah. this is why we had, had a category called level of insanity. Because, I mean, <laughs> you, you know, once it comes to African dictators, you I need the yeah. category called level of insanity. The, yeah, we've, we've, this is the first African one, isn't it? Yes. So, so yeah. do, you, do you want his death count? Yeah, go on. Let's, how, how about 300,000. Oh, that's not that bad. But, it's not that well, bad, but he's only in charge of a small country. 
Oh, oh yeah, okay, okay. Proportion. Tin pot kind of Castro level. That's ten times Castro, te and many hundreds of times more than uh, Pinochet, right? So, oh, yeah. Depends on how whether you whether you, whether you uh, whether you measure them against uh, you know Stalin or whether you measure them against uh, people of the similar size. Okay, oh. I think you you kind of have to look at the size of the country which which he has. It's Forty-one you know I mean? million. So. Um, well, probably probably about twenty million in, the, in his day, but and yeah, I mean, particularly also when it comes to those sort of countries, we we more than likely have to agree that it will always be a wild estimate, and we never really know mm. because you know those are countries in which there was very little oversight, effectively. To be fair, we, we don't really know with the other ones. True, yes, but what I mean is, in in those places, you know, how many reporters were there ever about or. Yeah. You know, what was even the literacy rate of the population to be able to pass it on? Okay, we'll give him, what, a two? Or a three? Uh, I would give him a three. Give him a three. God, yes. That's, that's, okay. that's weak. Absolutely weak. It seems like it might be more for... Oh, his his longevity, longevity is piss poor as well. Uh, yes, he, he happened to start a war with Tanzania. Again, we're looking at a kind of Mussolini complex. Yeah. Someone who wishes to branch out and show how strong and powerful he is and mm -hmm. flex his imperial muscle and then <laughs> comes a cropper against a force Sorry. such as Tanzania. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I just was looking at his Wikipedia bio. Children, 43 brackets, estimate. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. He tried to make up for his body count, is what you're saying. Yeah, I guess. Um, but yeah, he was only in office for eight years. So that's it's pretty got to be one. Uh, well, there's probably people with less than eight years, isn't there? So, what do we give uh, Khomeini? Three? Uh, let me check. Because he was ten years, wasn't he? Uh, let me check. Khomeini, what did you get? You got four. What icon did he get? Did you give him a little Mohammed or? I gave him a Sasso. <laughs> oh right, okay, yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> so, um, longevity, longevity, yeah, the two or three, something like that. Okay, but level of insanity. Let's, oh, let's go through some of now, the things that he um, did. First, first off, I would just like to give you his full title. <laughs> his <laughs> Excellency, President for Life, Field Marshal, Al-Haji, Dr. Idi Amin Dada, VC, DSO, MC, Lord of all the beasts of the earth and fishes of the seas, <laughs> and conqueror <laughs> of the British Empire in Africa in general, and <laughs> Uganda in particular. <laughs> Okay, he gets a ten. People are people are saying in the chat that he he ate his wife. <laughs> can we get a, can we get a fact, a fact check on that? Uh, he was he was in mutilation he, territory, definitely. Um, you know, I've not I've, I've I've not been looking up too much of Idi Amin, but yes, from what I heard, um, yes, he he was truly in let's chop people up uh, territory. Holy shit. Okay, so uh, Amini, uh, uh, his, uh, his Minister of Health said, on several occasions when I was Minister of Health, Amin insisted on being left alone with his victims' bodies. Of course, there is no evidence of what he does in private, but it is universally believed in Uganda that he engages in blood rituals uh, and whatnot. Uh, he also sa said on several occasions he heard Amin boast of eating human flesh. So yeah, he, he, he wins. Uh, I've heard of him having uh, human heads in refrigerators. Christ Almighty! So uh, yes, he he he. I think he is the perfect ten. He might be a ten plus, to be honest. <laughs> Holy shit! So what what do we think of the sense of style on uh, on all uh, uh, Well, I mean, he seems to be the well. Me. Let's put it like that. I think he was a heavyweight boxing champion in the, in the army, wasn't he? Something like that. Uh, I don't know. Actually. It looks like he'd pack a punch, doesn't he? But is that style? Like you guys lowballed Stalin on the style. Who he was yeah. kind of rocking that kind of stockiness, but uh, there's that style. Yes, that's but again, looking at that, you know, know, kind of, we're heading into sort of um, amateurish, uh, amateurish Pinochet territory, aren't we? He, he um, looks like he's overcompensating for me. <laughs> <laughs> he he looks like he looks like he doesn't fit some stereotypes. Well, yes, but that's just it. I think when it comes to dictators, and I think we all know whom we have in mind here. 
there is a certain way of wearing a, a uniform in almost a clownish manner <laughs> that just adds to the style mm. where, where you, you become meme worthy um and i think when it comes to yes when it comes to Idi Amin, you're already in that territory yeah yeah i, th I think um i mean you know often he's a military man isn't he so there's no way he earned all those medals either he obviously <laughs> gave himself a vote well he's the lord of the, all the beasts on the earth mate don't underestimate the man <laughs> That's, we'll give him a three for a sense of style. Uh, Despot bonus trades, right? Would it be racist if I got a picture of Diane Abbott? Because oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, he wasn't. I mean, to be fair, was he a socialist? Did he <laughs> I think Despot bonus trait. If anything, it should be a portrait of Hannibal Lecter in that mask. <laughs> well, he just seems to have been like the apex African warlord. As far as I can tell, so it's just it was a military man. What was his ideology? Yeah, I'm just having a look at that. No, I think his ideology was me. Yeah, that's the thing. That's all I can see is oh, just hang, a military yeah, strongman essentially. Pan Africanist group. It was. I think he was very tribal. Uh, I think most of his general was were of his tribe and things like that. Uh, okay, apparently he used to have considerable Israeli support. Right. <laughs> so, like, um, I, can, I can see here he had backing from the Soviet Union in East Germany. Yeah. That, yeah, but that, that might not have been necessarily ideological rather than political. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just seems to have been like a, like a We Was Kang's version of the British Empire. He's trying to run. Yeah, he was kind of like, because I don't know if we'll get on to uh, Mugabe, but a very strong part of Mugabe's whole thing was being anti-colonial, anti-imperialist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but my sense with Armin is that he was kind of like, kind of proud of his time in the British Army and so on. And yes, you know, and he, he felt embraced slighted it. when the British distanced themselves from him. You know, Idi Amin is going to get another Margaret Thatcher, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's part of him that was looking for external validation, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, that's, that's the thing. He looks like he's overcompensating. He looks like he's looking for people to say, yes, you're really a dictator, we promise. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Maggie gets a second one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm loving the desktop bonus like trait. Now. Mean. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, good God. Let's. Uh, oof, okay. Big guns. Big guns. Come on. Let's do it. Oh, Christ. Okay. <clears throat> be, be, before we get going on this, I have to tell you this because I've been telling everybody. <laughs> I recently found out that China have over 20 ghost cities yeah that is whole cities where they've built skyscrapers and like fake london fake paris yep um 100 million hou houses empty homes in ghost cities yep. because the government have decided that they built all these cities expecting people to move from rural areas to urban areas and uh yeah they're all empty um, and they did so Well, their I entire don't... economic plan is is um, heavily dependent on construction. Which so is they keep on building, even though nobody wants to live there. <laughs> which is why they're now pushing plans like, have you heard about the new Silk Road, whereby they want to build a, a, a railway through Central Asia all the way through Europe to Britain? They should do it. And the, the thing is, you know, they want those countries to pay for it. Um, and really, <laughs> the what, you know, Trump they're sort of saying, oh, we would have a train, we could move all these goods. And you think, well, yeah, we've got massive container ships for that. We don't need a, tra a, a rail route. Why do they want to do it by rail? To well, be fair, because though, they want to build. You know, yeah, they, no, they can no, no, basically no, no, keep on, their construction on, companies busy. Hang on, hang on. It, 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 to be fair, Central Asia could probably use it. It's all well and good saying we've got container ships, but they don't have those in Central Asia. Oh, yes, but I mean, what is there to move in and out of Central Asia? In, in that kind of bulk. Consumer goods. We've got to capitalize these people. Yes, yeah, to, to sell Nike trainers in Kazakhstan. I, hey, you think they won't buy them? <laughs> but so, no, when, it, when yeah. it comes to that, um, it was interesting. I saw something by some uh, sort of economic analysts once on YouTube, and 
uh, one, you know, they were kind of senior economic analysts for sort of major investment houses and whatever. And, and one of them said that he once asked one of his researchers, can you go away and find me whatever research data you can find on um, office space in China that is currently empty? And he came back and it was billions of square feet. And he just went, no, no, I'm sorry, you know, I'm sorry, but you must have got this wrong. This can't yeah. be the correct figure. And the researcher just said, no, no, you know, I thought it was wrong too. This is this has been double and treble checked. Wow. And the guy just basically said, it appears they've built enough office space to house pretty much every single person in China in office. <laughs> you know, every God. man, woman, and child. And that is the empty, the surplus office space. And you just go, yeah, this is a bubble, and this is going to burst. And when it's going to burst, it's going to burst hard. Unless, unless it's part of some grand plan that they have. <clears throat> if they um, they, just, just wait for it, and then swoop in and buy some. Like you could probably have a pretty plush apartment there. I mean, you'd have to live in China, but you could probably like <laughs> get yourself some real estate. You know, they have the internet in China. It's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, they've got. You could have yeah. stuff. <laughs> I, I also uh, on one of the videos I watched, they uh, they went to this um, guy who was like running a toy store in one of these towns. Oh yes, that was and in they, the, the, the is it the South China Mall or something like that. Yes, it's that famous mall which is like massive and nobody ever goes there. And they were like, "Did you sell anything?" I see. He's like, "I sold a toy yesterday, one <laughs> toy all day." Um, so I, I don't know. I just find it. I find that sort of thing fascinating. But apparently, um, China has a, a, a what was it? Sorry, I, someone's put the figure in the chat. Um, a twenty-six trillion dollar infrastructure debt. Yes, um, that's insane. My it's God. it's basically it's all sort of it's it's the debt of the actual companies, and of course, many of those companies are state-owned, but it's not official state debt. Hmm. So effectively, one could go, let those companies go bust and then write the debt off that way. But yes, it is it is a ginormous debt. And uh, there is just nothing that can, you know, you, you look at it and you just go, um, this cannot last. Yeah. I remember, I think it was Rory Bremner who once described the United States of America and China as two one-legged giants leaning on each other for support in order not to fall over. All right. Basically, the the Americans need to take up all the debt in order to be able to buy Chinese goods. Hmm. And the moment that the Chinese, you know, the, the Chinese must lend the Americans the debt so that the Americans can buy the goods. Because the moment that the, the Americans stop buying the goods, all the Chinese are out of work. It's a very uh, precarious situation we have at, at the moment in the world because we're so dependent on them. I don't know. I, in fact, they're an issue because they they distort every market so badly that um, you know, because they're they're essentially gaming the system. They're oh, yes. not communists, but they're operating in the yes. In the every market. every um every growth plan they have ever set, they've always met, which is is kind of unique in the world, isn't it? You know, and everyone always just takes their word for it, as in, oh well, what did you what did you have last year? Oh, seven percent growth, uh, which is you know one percent better than our you know our plan. And you just go, yeah, it's funny that none of the democracy has ever managed to pull that off, but China does it every time, and we just simply take their word for it. Well, to be fair, being a, a one-party communist state, maybe it is within your power to make that happen. <laughs> what are you saying? You <laughs> I'm, I'm saying they literally might actually be able to do it by forcing people to do it. Um, right, so his body count then. If if Joe, so, if Uncle Joe's the 10, he's got to be the 9. So, yes. well, here, here it is. I was surprised that this was as low as it was because it's 40 million on my list. <laughs> as low as it was. But that's a low ball. <laughs> yeah. As um, many people in the chat, I'm sure, are saying, I haven't had a look, but... I mean, I've seen that figure for Mao go up to 100 million. In, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll give him a nine because 40 million is still very high. Yes, I mean, nine, he could easily be a 10 because, yeah. I mean, he is the one who it wasn't enough to have the great leap forward and just kill lots of people. No, he mm. then also had to have the Cultural Revolution. Yeah. So 
he kind of doubled down on calamity. Well, do you know what he did? Do you know what he did um, after the regime was established? He he kind of thought that things were getting a bit complacent, so he decided to have a nether revolution. He was like, "Oh yeah, the young have to rise up again and overthrow the power. I'll just stay You're as the power, dictator. Dunny." I mean, yeah, he, so he basically used it to purge most of his high command and so on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is the thing that I don't quite understand about these, like Mao and Stalin, is that. They killed so many. Can, can you imagine um, after you've killed like the third or the fourth wave, you're like how shit the people you are down to. Like you're, you're basically down to like idiots, cowards. You know? Well, yeah, they're, they're the best kind of people because they'll do exactly as you want. But the things I'm just thinking about body counts. I'm like, I mean, when you pass 20 million dead, are you suddenly thinking, well, what's another 5 million? What's another 10? Well, I, I'm clearly not putting a cap on the number of people I'm planning to kill. So, like, 20 million, you know? And then it's like, oh, what do you get in total? 40. Fuck it. Well, I mean, it goes back to what Stalin said, wasn't it? That, uh, yeah, it's a statistic, you know, yeah. uh, it's just a statistic. Once it passes a certain number, it's just a statistic. Yeah. Some Somebody in the chat is saying that um, the Cultural Revolution, because he wanted the power back, so, he like, his grip on power was slipping, so he mm. thought he'd have another revolution to... Well, I mean, in that respect, is Ma Zedong not just another Chinese emperor, just in different garb? Well, that's what you'd expect, isn't it? Really, he had um, a he had the little red he had the little red book, didn't he? That was his. Oh, that was uh, his sayings, yeah. Mm. So, he, what's what's his longevity? It's pretty good, isn't it? Isn't it? Wasn't he in for a? I think he uh, was in for quite an innings. Yes. Well, it 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 um, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not He's, bad. I so. think he may be looking like a ten. Yeah, he was the, the chairman of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China from 45 to 76. So yes, that's 32 that's years. A good 31 years, yes. Yeah, so we're, I'll give him a nine, because there might be someone longer than him. Yeah. I think Castro definitely was longer than him. Ca Castro was a ten, wasn't he? Yeah, I think, no, I think he's only an eight, isn't he? Um, level of insanity, then. Well, uh, no, my old, my old uh, mentor... Um, Sweared blind that Mao Zedong was a genius, despite oh, the fact okay. that he killed forty million people. That doesn't present prevent him from being insane, though. Um, that 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 aspects of his plan. I mean, he was very rational, obviously, in the yeah. way that he planned things. Didn't really care about human life, but uh, <laughs> <He's> <laughs> a sign, a sign of a psychopath, really. Isn't I mean, it? is yeah. that proof of insanity? Because I don't know that many no, kind of like nutty insane. nutty stories about Mao. Yeah, uh, yeah. You just I mean, seem like very pregnant. He's a bit well, I mean, like when you manage to win up with such fervor that people end up cannibalizing their political enemy, um, yeah, you're more than likely in, in complete madman territory. Well, it, it's only mad if you value hum human life. Yes, and I think but, when it comes to Mao, that's more than likely a zero. I mean, um, yeah, but that's what I mean. It's like it's not that he was making like decisions he didn't understand. It's just he didn't care. It was so, a rational calculation. Yeah. Well, yes, but isn't just the sheer fact that you don't care? Isn't that in itself a sign of you know, well, um, yeah, yeah. utter psychological? Well, it's not cannibalism. It's just like a detachment from the real world. I, I mean, I, I want to liken him to a kind of big name dictator version of Angela Merkel, where <laughs> I, I know, bear, with me, bear with me here, okay? Angela, Angela Merkel, okay? No matter what happens, She's able to somehow. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect. I really didn't know what to expect. This is Merkel. It's like, holy shit. No, but hear me out a second, okay? Okay, go on. Merkel is really pragmatic. Like, no matter what happens, <laughs> she'll be like, no, no, in all seriousness, the moment where she lets in a million people. I, I love. <laughs> if he's just, Merkel's really pragmatic. If she needed to kill forty million Germans, she'd do it. <laughs> I think she would. If it would keep her in power, I think she might. I'm sure she's not that. Well, she, bad. she was willing to let in a million. Do you know why she let in a million, uh, a million uh, refugees and Turks and things? It wasn't because, because 
humanitarian reasons. It wasn't. It was because she was on TV and this little girl was crying and it looked terrible. Oh, so, God. and she was under massive pressure because she looked heartless on TV. Because really? her, her first instinct was to say to this little girl, Douglas Murray talks about this in his book, The Strange Death of Europe. I didn't know about it. No, her first instinct was to tell this little girl who was crying. She said, little girl, politics is not easy. Uh, I can't do it, you know. Um, and then she got massive, like, you know, press, uh, uh, people like writing in saying, how could you be so heartless? So basically to turn it around to look good, she let in all of those refugees. And then now she has pivoted. How did she win this last election? It's because she's pivoted yeah. and pulled a U-turn on her own. Like yeah. now she's on her, not, own, on her own catastrophe. Yeah, well right. And, and, and this is what I'm talking about. She, she's prepared to do anything to stay in power. And Ma was prepared to manufacture well, okay, a, okay. a second revolution to stay in power. So we give them a what, a zero? <sighs> well, well no, um, I mean, you know, uh, I'm, I'm just looking at one Wikipedia page here that I found. Um, and you get a kind of, you know, a, a flavor here. Uh, the first large scale killings under Mao took place during land reform and the counter, <laughs> counter revolutionary campaign. In I can't help but feel that that's something that could be achieved without in, mass killings. In official, in official study materials published in 1948, Mao envisaged that one tenth of the peasants, about 50 million people, would have to be destroyed to facilitate agrarian reform. Actual numbers killed in land reform are believed to have been lower, but at least one million. So here is a guy who just basically casually says, well, perhaps a tenth will have to go. Yeah, but that's, that's not... That's okay with him. That's yeah, but fair, that... isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, tough but fair. <laughs> so that's what human rights was called it. So, <laughs> you know, I'm literally describing any of these things now as tough but fair by human rights was. I mean, do you know D Diane Diane Abbott said on national TV that she thought that Mao did more good than bad. Well, well, thanks, thanks for ruining who my special fucking oh sorry oh sorry what trait was going to be. Oh sorry, <laughs> I, was on. I had it already. Oh, you, you spoiled sorry. the surprise there, have you? Oh. Well, there she is. <laughs> I'm glad that she at least got a look in. And it wasn't like in a, in a racist way. Yeah. To that page in the side chat, because I've got the feeling you two guys will want some, uh, want, want some subsequent reading in that yeah, area. Yeah, that does it, sound interesting. It's, um, it's not just on Mao, it's just generally on communist regimes. Yeah, but the thing, the thing that you're describing there is um, someone who's Machiavellian. You're not describing someone who's insane. Right, okay, I'll ask the question again. Is he going to Arkham, or is he going to... No. Oh, Arkham, definitely. Uh, he, I, I, he's definitely an Arkham patient, as far as I'm concerned. Sargon, what do you reckon? Um, well, I don't, I don't think he's insane. I just think he's evil. <laughs> Let's go for three, maybe? So, I mean, you know, you, you haven't cast your lot. Do you think he's insane, academic agent? I think he's more towards calculating than... Than insane. That's my personal take. Okay. So in, in that case, it would have to. I guess it would either it, it's a zero because both of you kind of outvote me, or it's a very low figure. Yeah, I mean, I I would go for zero or one maybe. I'm happy to go along with that to lowball it. Okay. Um, he has to be beatable on something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I shall. I shall be. I shall be the um the medic. Who, who differs in his opinion. And then, you know, once the patient goes out and slaughters, you know, 50 people at Euston <laughs> Station with a with, with a blunt teaspoon, I will be the one who said, oh, I, I told you so. On, on the plus side, I'm sure that sense of style is going to be easy to uh, establish. It's got to be the, fucking Surely bad. that's, that's you, just, just a zero, should, isn't it? You say that, but I've spotted something. Oh, can dear. You, can you guys see this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> It's, no, what, what am I? Oh God! That's a statue, of Mount Mal. Yeah. What do you reckon? Uh, may I point out that looks nothing like him? Yeah. <laughs> that that's the first thing that springs to my mind. Um, but yeah, no, no, no. I don't think that improves his sense of style. That's just his inflated ego. 
So was that actually done during his lifetime, or was that just yeah. done later to please the Communist Party? It looks I don't a little know, modern I, I, to I, me. I've been I've been browsing Mao pictures, and he had absolutely no sense of style. Uh, just o- always the same in the same like little button down fucking thing. Look at this, just no no style whatsoever. But, so that might be considered like the height of cool in China. No, I don't care. This, no, but look, it's, <laughs> no, I, I really honestly think stylish, we can right? say it's it's that is truly just nothing yeah he, he, okay he's clearly a man who didn't I mean, give a fuck about his wardrobe think of how castro like appears character. in his fatigues and then look at this you know and and you just think well no it, it's just it's just zero i, Sorry, I would yeah. just like to say that pinochet's card is looking a lot better than Mao's right now <laughs> 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 Mal, Mal, Mal's going to demolish him on longevity and body count. There, <laughs> well, I think on, on, on longevity, he had a nine Pinochet. Oh, did he, did he he retired, if you remember. Oh, yeah, of course. So it's body count that you need with Mao Zedong. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But other than that, yes, Pinochet reigns supreme. Yes. Yeah, a sense of style's un- unbeatable. Can't, can't, <laughs> can't knock it. Um, right, okay, okay. That is unless we go to Libya. Well, we, we're going to Iraq first. I'm just going to go grab another drink. But uh, you, you guys do uh, do feel free to fill in. Well, for I was going to say, okay. do you want to have a quick uh, quick break here? Which, uh, just uh, like a oh, three-minute no, no timeout. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. We can have a five-minute break, and I'll okay. just go. And... We'll be back very shortly, chat. Sorry. Yep, okay.
Wow, the chat's looking pretty spicy. <laughs> was Julius Caesar a communist? No. There's the answer to that. Wow. Merkel is a dictator. <laughs> Unfortunately, the answer's no. But she may as well be. I, uh, I've got a cup of tea. Excellent. Right. So, what does Saddam Hussein's body count look like? Uh, oh, hang on. Where are we? Um, I've got it here. Got, okay, it's got to be somewhere north of 300,000. 900,000. 900,000, yes. Plus a 1.5 million from the Iran Iraq war. Huh. Which uh, which we didn't give Khomeini. So, so what, we give him a four? I think 900,000 looking pretty strong. It's more like a five or a six, but yeah, exactly. really not. I mean, on, on a scale where a nine is 40 million, I guess. Well, yeah, but it's it's all relative. It's like you say, it's it's whether it's strong. Yeah, I think China has would be fair, people. surely. I mean, he's 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 in he's in decent territory. I mean, we're yeah. we're kind of touching a million here. Yeah, if you can kill a million people, you should be at least halfway up the and scale. It, it wasn't like it was at the beginning of the twentieth century either. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so, I give it. I give it at least a five. Man, longevity. That's all like. He lasted quite a while, did well, he not? 17, yeah. till about 2003. Something like that. So we're looking at about an eight, surely. Yeah, he's looking pretty good. It's at least an eight. Someone that managed to hang on about 20 years or so. Um, More than. It's 30 years. Oh, no, 30. no, no, sorry, no, no. It was 24 years. Um, so yeah, that'd be, a, what, a seven? No, I think before we gave someone, you know, 20, 23, 24 years, we gave about an eight. So I think eight would, would be a fair... Okay, okay. Level of insanity. He's got to rate fairly strongly on this. Well... He's a Muslim mean, socialist, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, he fancied himself the new Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, yes, yes. When it came to those sort of illusions, I, mm. I grant you, yes. He, he, and he, he, his son was an absolute fucking lunatic. So well, Again, with, with a lot of that, I'm not sure how much of that is propaganda and how much of it actually mm. is true, if you know what I mean. His sons were pretty mad, from what um, I hear. Yeah. I, I think the younger son, that's the one who is alleged to have been completely off his rocker. Mm. Um, but again... I take that with a pinch of salt. Whereas the other, son, the older son, I don't think is is supposed to have been, um, you know, Gaga in that respect. Um, and it was the older son, I believe, who was being groomed to be the successor. Hmm. But yeah, um, as I say, Mister Nebuchadnezzar. Um, I think he's got to be at least a four or five. Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely, yes, yeah. undoubtedly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was he particularly creative in killing people? Ooh, gassed a lot of people. It was famously Chemical Ali, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, see, my picture of Saddam Hussein is that he's kind of quite like um, not the most sophisticated of chaps. He's kind of more on the <laughs> yeah, more on the, more on the thug end. You know, he's, <clears throat> he's not wearing any capes. He's kind of like I always picture him with the, with the sh I always picture him with a shotgun. You know, blasting the shotgun yep. into the air. Do you remember that famous uh, speech yep, he was yep. giving? <laughs> So, yeah. Um, what we're giving his uh, sense of style, dictator chic. Oh, poor. I'm not three. sure. I think as as, he, as dictator chic goes, I think he 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 didn't only have one look. That's just it. He 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 stood there with his alpine hat, shooting his uh, shotgun into the sky. Yeah, but you must but at the must same time he him general, him. and he could do businessman, and he could do. Uh, you know, Arab and and whatever. So, um, I, I, may, I may be alone in this. He was quite I, dapper in that regard to a certain I, extent. I kind of thought the late, uh, you know, just pre-death Saddam Hussein, where he had the beard and the suit, <laughs> was this? was kind of. <laughs> <laughs> That's the image I was talking about. The, the shock. What is this? this is actually him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, maybe he gets a higher on the scale. Who knows? But yeah, I, I, I'm seeing where you're coming from. Yeah. But but you know, you know, see that image in the top left there, where he was um, just oh. before he died, when he was on trial. Oh yeah. I, I actually thought that that was when he looked at his most dashing. He was kind of kind of really. He was yeah. doing his George Galloway impression. <laughs> <laughs> I've, oh, that's that's who I'm going to give him the scene. Good, good call. 
Do you think you know how there's been like a resurgence of uh, George W. Bush nostalgia? I think we're at the point where people are having like, yeah, like in America, like people have got now like George Bush nostalgia. Uh, I think the left has. has Um, Do you think that we're at the point where we can have Saddam Hussein nostalgia at this point? (laughs) Well, I think when it comes to Iraq, more than likely, yes, to a certain degree, probably. I mean, if if there would not have been. Uh, you know, a, a regime change, there would not have been an ISIS. So I think, you know, w- we have to be fair in that regard. That, there, yes, might, there might be some. Um, it, but do, do you not have like a faint nostalgia for the world where the biggest problems were like him on South Park, essentially? <laughs> kind of like, <laughs> like do, you mem- do you remember that? Do you remember when, uh, you know, because he, he, he was kind of an early meme, wasn't he? Saddam Hussein. Like, yeah. as well as being a supposedly global threat you know, he wasn't i mean everybody knew he wasn't really a threat and it's kind of uh, a contained thing to worry about um as opposed to now where it's like seems like the apocalypse is coming every day uh, if you if you watch the news you know so i don't know just like a, i guess a boogeyman of old i mean uh, sense for, of style please give the man a six just for effort <laughs> well i mean yeah yeah, I mean, the, there were a few low points in his life. I mean, look at him there on the on the far right. If you <laughs> scroll up at the very top, uh, on on the absolute right at the very top, you see him in black and white dragging on a fag there. <laughs> and and yeah, I mean, we're in Hollywood territory here. I, I then wish you to give British uh, this because we've been very hard on his. Uh... Okay, okay, we'll give him a six, <laughs> just just for this picture alone. Can, to be can I? I mean. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I could, I could be, uh, comp- yeah, that, that's right. He was Satan's boyfriend in South Park movie. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Um, but did, did anyone else feel this? I'm, I may be the only person on earth who felt this, but the, do you remember the day that Saddam Hussein was captured? No, not. I no, felt no. a tinge of sympathy for him. I just thought, oh, yeah, I, I, I same with Gaddafi. To be honest, I kind of felt bad for them. Because it's yeah. you know it's like you, you go from talk about like going from extreme highs to extreme lows. There's there's certainly like a an ancient Greek fable to be written out of it, sort of thing, you know. You know, like there he is now, like cowering in a hole, yeah. cowering in a ditch type Wasn't thing. It King Croesus, who declared a war on the Persians, and he was the one who famously went to the Oracle of Delphi and got yeah, the one order. kingdom will be destroyed, a great yes, empire a great will be kingdom destroyed, kingdom destroyed. Sorry, yeah. destroyed. Yeah. And eventually, I think he lived out his days in a cage. Of uh, the court of King Darius of Persia, yeah. oh, God. so there, there there is a certain um, Greek tragedy element to um, both Gaddafi and Saddam Hussein. There really is, and it's like, and <clears throat> I mean, you know, they weren't nice men or anything, but it's still, you know, it's something that happened. That is, it's I, it's something you can think about. It could. Have I been just more. think it's that whole idea about being brought low when you were yeah. so high in your own mind type thing. So. Are we going yeah. to give him a five? Give him a six. Like a very he, he did. He did look quite dapper in a lot of his uniforms. He looks like a pretty solid card, actually. So, uh, yeah, it's not bad. It's like he wouldn't. Which he's got George Galloway on it. He would. He, he would eat Ceausescu for breakfast. That's what you're saying. If you were dealt <laughs> him in your old top Trump's hand, you'd be like, oh, okay, that's all right. You can do a lot with Saddam. You could win on. Like, he would beat. Um, if you got him, he would beat Mao on two different categories. So yep. that's a pretty good card. Right, okay. Let me uh let me have a browse through, see if there are any oh um... yeah, midway to option. <laughs> come on, that's, that's uh da, 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 da. come on. We've got there are a lot of dictators. <laughs> well there are a great many dictators and we're not gonna get through all of them. We just I have like to a... say, oh, academic okay. agent, he, he he managed to pick a wonderful breadth of different kind of styles of dictators. Yeah, he really did. It, it's not all just in the same vein. <laughs> Oh, here we are, the great man himself. Yes. Mm. So, uh, what was his body count looking like? It's probably not that bad, to be fair. Who who have we got? Oh, Christ. Uh, okay, let me have a look. Uh, do I have a body count for Mugabe? I don't do think I? he's on this list. It's bad. Um, <laughs> basically, isn't it? Isn't it at least? Uh, it's at least in the millions. Really. 
just through people who've done because it's with Mugabe, it's not so much people who he's killed, it's people he's starved. Let me just start. Right. Were the people actually starved, or did the United Nations, uh, you know, feed them for him? Because I think at one point he had something like two thirds of the country being fed by the United Nations. Do you want to know something really interesting? His longevity is going to be one of the top ones. But yes, yeah, I mean, he must have a ten, surely. It, yeah, he's been in power thirty-five years, and he's still in power. He's the world's oldest head of state. <laughs> is he something? Isn't he something like ninety-three or ninety-four? Ninety-two, I think it is. Yep. Yeah. He's, uh, he's been there um, a long time. Okay, we'll just we'll get that in now. Good. And, and of Mr. course, Mugabe. we need to we need to point out, of course, that you know, despot bonus trait for Robert Mugabe is fleeting, at least, but a goodwill ambassador for healthcare in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> who who was it who gave him that? It, that was very recent, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Health organization. Yeah. Yes. It was some sort of dirty deal between the Chinese and various African countries and them having elevated a certain, uh, is it an Ethiopian or an Eritrean? I think it's an Ethiopian to become general secretary of the World Health Organization. So that was kind of a perk um, of being, you know, of his giving his allies that kind of nudge by uh, appointing Robert Mugabe, mm -hmm. a goodwill ambassador. Um, so that was clearly a wink towards the Chinese, as in, I understand, I owe you a favor, here you go. Um, whereas, yes, it was just a calamity, <laughs> because, I mean, here is a man who pretty much, uh, what is it, what did they say, his, the, the, um, the, ex the life expectancy was something like 63 in 1985, and by 2003 or something like that, it was, it had fallen to 44. And this guy was supposed to be the one going around the world giving people, uh, you know, advice on their health policies. Oh, it's just, it's just unbelievable. <laughs> what a terrible, uh, <laughs> terrible. The, the thing about the, the thing about the starvation, though, is that I, I, I'll never forget watching the documentary on Zimbabwe that they put out, uh, either Channel 4 or BBC. Mm. But he was basically deliberately starving his people. He was deliberately withholding food, deliberately... Well, um, how many died because of the starvation then? I'm just having a look here. Um, so I'm looking, he says, uh, on this one, it says, during the Rhodesian Civil War, he was responsible for around 20,000, which is surprisingly weak. That's quite poor, poor isn't it? Yeah. Not, not very yeah. impressive. You know, well, I, I guess on, the, on that basis, it's, uh, it's kind of difficult to get a total death toll number for him uh, looking around. If, if anyone has it, maybe you could drop it in the uh, chat, but he's looking like a one. Sadly, yeah, he's looking like a yeah, yeah. He's he's nothing special by the look of it. I'm 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 trying to find something here too, but I can't really find anything on Zimbabwe yeah. or Mugabe or. It's it's more incidental. So he's death, he's, he's another disappointment, isn't it? That's it, what we're saying here. Apparently, about ten thousand people died of died of hunger. It's just um, not able to live up to expectation. The, the, I, the, I think if it wouldn't be for the world, for the for the um, UN World Food Program, <laughs> he would have lost about two thirds of his population. But 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 don't forget that um, one of the yeah, problems you really could have racked up the numbers, Mugabe, if it wasn't for the pesky UN. <laughs> if it was, if it wasn't for foreign intervention, yes, he yeah. would have um, he would have succeeded in our list. <clears throat> and he's pictured there railing against the white man. One of the one of the troubles with uh, trying to do Mugabe though is that he's still in power, and you've got to remember that lots of these things come after light come to light after yes, the regime is over. Very true. Yeah. Um, okay. So level of insanity. Um, one of the things I will always forget. Uh, I will never forget is uh, when I read that book Why Nations Fail. They had this story about um, uh, about the lottery, the Zimbabwean lottery, mm -hmm. and everybody was assembled. You know. Uh, for Mugabe to present the winner of the first Zimbabwe lottery. Um, this was happened in 2000. And they drew it out of the, the hat type thing. And the winner, of course, was lo and behold, President <laughs> Mugabe himself. <laughs> so he ends up giving himself the lottery prize money. It's kind of like... Congratulations, uh, Mr. Mugabe. I've got this uh, little factoid sheet here. He enjoys being compared to Hitler. When somebody made the comparison... <laughs> When somebody, made great. when somebody made the comparison due to his alleged racist attitude towards white people, Mugabe responded, I am still the Hitler of the time. 
this Hitler has only one objective, justice for his own people, uh, so sovereignty for his people, recognition for the independence of his people, and their right to their resources. If that is Hitler, then let me be Hitler tenfold. So that's what he said. Wow. The, the word, the, the German word, of course, for the people being das Volk. So, yes, yeah. not far off there. Wow. Uh, his, he, he gave himself a birthday present, uh, which was a watch of £650,000, which was branded obscene by Human Rights Watch, because, of course, people are starving. Um, so there we go. They did amend that to tough but fair, though, so... <laughs> Speaking of uh, uh, people who lefties like, there was a period where kind of leftist intellectuals and so on kind of liked Mugabe because he was so against the old British Empire. He's and so like and Chomsky yes. bonus tray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure that he was given an honorary degree in a British university. As yeah. late as 1994, I want to say. I would all be surprised. Yes, I think it was an Aberdeen University. He was given a, a honorary degree. I'll I'll just fact check, check that for you. Um, I don't he, know if they later rescinded it, but yeah, I mean, he's seen as a hero of anti-colonialism. Yes, which yeah. is of course why um, the South African government doesn't want to do anything about him. Yeah, because the South African government could effectively turn off the tap. Zimbabwe is entirely dependent on South Africa. If they basically said, look, you have to go, then that would be it. He would simply not be able to withstand that. Um, and they see him as, you know, a kind of father figure alongside Mandela and whatever, even though, of course, they are of somewhat different caliber. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, he is. He, when you listen to him today, he still trumpets the anti-colonialist rhetoric and you just think look i'm sorry but it's now pretty much 50 years since you've you've had your way i mean um at some point it has to be your responsibility it's your fault that you're starving the people you see one of the things that people don't know about zimbabwe as well is that before mugabe was there um it was of course the bread basket of that yes. region it was really under uh, under the british rule they they actually they were the biggest producers of food and the, G the GDP was one of the highest in, in Africa. Um, and he's basically tanked it. I mean, they had, I think they had hyperinflation to the point where I think just to buy like a loaf of bread or something, you had to bring like two suitcases of money. And in the end, they just, in the end, they just did away with the, uh, with the Zimbabwean currency that I think they, you have to spend dollars there now. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, just complete. Uh, train wreck. Um, mm -hmm. I've got the list. I've got the list of the revoked honorary degrees. University of Edinburgh, nineteen ninety four. This was revoked in two thousand and seven. University of Massachusetts, uh, nineteen eighty six, revoked in two thousand and eight. Michigan State University gave him an honorary degree in nineteen ninety. This was revoked in September of two thousand and eight. I mean, God, they really wanted to give him those degrees, though, didn't they? Hero of Pan African Marxism, anti colonialist. Yeah, he's a hero. Oh, wait, he's not a hero. He's a Marxist. If it doesn't tell you, <laughs> if that doesn't tell you what you need to know about the yeah. left, I don't know what will. Yeah. It's just, just, uh. anyway. But, uh, right, okay, so level of insanity on Mugabe, man. Come on. He's got to be a nine. <laughs> Does he eat human uh, flesh? I think nine is perhaps a bit harsh. Eight. Yeah, I think maybe a seven. Yes, uh, I think he's, he's pretty six nutty. Six or but... seven, I think, within that territory. Yes. Yeah. See, I, I want to say that he's somebody who got more insane as time went on, though. Like, imagine just. Undoubtedly. <laughs> yes, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, I think there's no doubt in that. Yes, he, he kind of, he's he's continuing ever further down the rabbit mm. hole, the further you know his country sinks because he just continues blaming everyone but himself. Um, at a, at his birthday do, Mugabe's guest will in, will be will enjoy chowing down on two elephants provided by a local farmer, much to the horror of conservationists. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, yeah, he gets a seven. Um, right, Spencer style. So this is an interesting question. Well, I'm sorry, but that moustache around... must we must win him some points. Sure. I was, was going to say it's all going to revolve around his half Hitler moustache. It's it's actually half the size of Hitler's moustache for some reason. So, as, as moustaches go, would you call that a Brazilian? <laughs> That's a good question. So, 
here's the thing because I, I am I am a, I have a beard I can exclusively reveal. Um, I cannot grow hair in exactly that bit where Mugabe. I could never. <laughs> I could never grow a Mugabe moustache because I do not grow hair in that. I don't know what you call it. That bit in the middle of his. The do you filtrum, guys grow hair? Is that, is, that, is, is that the filtrum or is that the filtrum with the nose? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I it's called the filtrum. Can you grow hair there? I can. Yeah. I have no growth there. So let us know in the chat if you could grow a Mugabe. <laughs> I might shave myself a Mugabe just to just to spite you now. <laughs> So I don't see him as being particularly stylish, um, to be honest. He just seems One. to wear suits. One, two, Phil no. Trump, that's it. Yeah, I think at least for that um, for that little moustache, which is sort of iconic in, in a hideous way, he, he's made himself instantly recognisable. Okay, I, I want to... So I want one to or two at least, yes. style. Can, you, <laughs> can you guys see this? Yes, he, we can. Yes. He, he's, he, he is he's worn some... <laughs> Centric outfits in his time, so maybe we should give him a bit of a, a bit of an up on the on the side. No, so. surely yes. I think you're right. We need to we need yeah. to up that level. Yeah. Um, just in terms of clownishness. Um, yeah. So so give him a four. Well, I was I was actually thinking like a five or a six, but and given the moustache, def I think six. He's now looking like a very solid card. I have to say. So a five. Give him a five. Oh, okay. Right. Not bad. Guess who, not going straight. Um, who's, who's the I, I, I think Noam Chomsky. <laughs> yeah, it seems like... Uh, it would have to be what? some kind of ardent anti-colonialist. Oh, yeah, that's, that'll be our boy Noam. <laughs> the dean of the University <laughs> of Edinburgh or whatever. Um, he, as, he was mates with Castro, too. Since they were all, like, friends, there was kind of, like, a, almost like a, a circuit. A bloody socialist, this boy. <laughs> He was a hardcore Marxist, Mugabe, as well as being anti-colonialist. Yeah. He was a part mm, of that. This is, this is the thing. Like... Yeah, some, somewhere in the afterlife, there must be some kind of, you know, railway station waiting room where they all get together. <laughs> and they just, you know, spend time hugging each other and reminiscing. Yeah, and they'll, they'll get together and sit there, so did you create true communism, your true socialism, comrade? And they all say no. No, but we ate elephants. <laughs> <laughs> Do people no, know but about, I did die billionaire. So yeah. Do people know about what he what he did, like you know, expelling all the white farmers and persecuting them and collectivizing the land? Yeah, I, and yeah, I presume yeah. that everyone. I mean, you can, if if you want to know anything more about this, just literally Google Mugabe white farmers, and you'll be able to see. Yes, I found it always funny how the people who kind of came to claim the land and kill the farmers and burn down farmhouses and whatever. Yeah. You know the kind of thing you do if you want to take over the land afterwards. It's yeah, yeah. Totally you need that farm Those people farmhouse. were all referred to as veterans, and you just <laughs> looked at them, and they were about twenty, thirty years old, and you were going, "Veterans of which war?" Anything, anything, and everything prompted. <laughs> but um, Talk, talking about trump cards as well, if anyone's on and ever like a kind of petty Twitter row with someone who's trying to tell you that uh, you know black people can't be racist or whatever, Mugabe's your. You could just. Say Mugabe, and they can't even twist it round to the race. <laughs> yeah. race he, he, power he, he's li yeah, he's literally. I hate white people. <laughs> that's, that's his political platform. Yeah, and he's got power. So yeah. so he's even addictive. by their definition, he is racist. So let's uh, let's do this one then. Yeah. Okay, Pol Pot, the killing fields of Cambodia. Let's. I, I'm actually going to take my glasses off just in in honour of Paul. <laughs> I, I don't think we've got Paul Pot on the list. What? He's got oh, to be at least like two and a half million. He's, he's yeah, got sure. a massive body count. Uh, yeah. Let's have a look. Particularly given that it's you know again a, a fairly small country. We're not talking the yeah. Soviet Union or something like that. Yeah. I seem to remember that it was like a fifth of the entire country at one point. Cambodia, right? Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> he's, 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 it's, it's of three million. Out of a population of eight million. Fuck. That's that's quite efficient. Put it like that. I mean, the the, the twenty sixteen population is only fifteen million. If you killed three million out of fifteen million, that'd be like a catastrophe. <laughs> Holy fuck! Well, he's so got to have a ten, really, isn't he? He's he, he's pretty high. Well, well, are we doing it relative? But he's got around. Uh, we we are describing in relative terms. Yeah, so. I mean, I've got here at least two hundred thousand people were executed by the Khmer Rouge, while estimates of the total number of deaths resulting from Khmer Rouge policies 
including disease and starvation, range from 1.4 to 2.2 million out of a population of around 7 million. So yeah, we're in the same ballpark as what you're suggesting. So that just yeah. does seem quite hideous, yes. So he surely must be a very high score. Give him a nine then, at least. Do, do you know nine. what I don't understand about the commies, right? The, the, the communists or the, all of these various dictate, uh, Marxist regimes. Why do they persist with the collectivize the farm plan? Like after it failed in the 30s for the Soviets, why did the Chinese then do it? Or like, why is he doing it in the 70s? <clears throat> He ideology. He it's must all ideology. Know it's going to kill people. So but it's all he... ideology. They have to. They can't have someone with pro productive private property living outside of their socialist system because that person will do well for themselves. And everyone will be like, why is that person doing better than us? And, and also, the fact that it hasn't worked before is absolutely no argument because yeah. they will always say that wasn't proper communism. God. So and yes, it's, pure it's like talking to a brick wall. They will just simply not, um, you know, it's it, it's always worth yet another attempt. Yeah. But, no, but because if if Marx's grand theory is put into practice exactly right, then it's going to be great or something. I, I, I guess one of my big, like, why do collective farms fail so badly? It's, it's, they don't just fail. They, they, they like, badly cause mass famines. Uh, I just find that... Probably like Aristotle was saying, if something's held in common, nobody cares for it. Well, I think it's not that, to be honest, um, because you would still think that people would at least be interested in feeding themselves, if you know what well, I mean. That's a fair point. But I think what it is, is when you have collective farms, you no longer have the people managing the farms who actually know how to run a farm. So you end up with bureaucracies running farms. People you, in offices think... who have no idea what it takes to run a farm. Yeah, but you, you think, like... The peasants would still. I suppose they probably couldn't. Holy, the combined effects of execution, strenuous working conditions, malnutrition, and poor medical care cause the deaths of approximately twenty-five percent of the Cambodian population. <laughs> he killed a fucking quarter of the population. That's incredible. That's, like, uh, it's probably just a good thing he wasn't put in charge of a larger country. Yes, I think that's, that's a that's, good way of putting it. Yes, that, that's the only the only reason he doesn't get a ten, because that is such a staggering percentage of your country. It's like fucking hell, man. And what's his date? He only what's had eighteen his... years. Right, so he's about a six years. Yeah, still about six. Fairly Seven. decent, still. Yeah, well, it's, about it's six. decent. Yeah, it's decent, but it's nothing uh, particularly. Uh, no, but I mean, given about. given how hyper violent. It is. I mean, normally, you know, the more erratic and nonsensical and out of proportion it is, mm. the more likely it is to just burn itself up and just destroy uh, itself. I, I've, I've been thinking about this. There, there, are, there are lots of reasons why totalitarian regimes can persist, right? And it's because anyone who's even slightly been complicit with the regime needs the regime to exist. If you've if you've ever been part of, like, you know, the police or you know any any of the any of the power structure you're going to be on the wrong side of it when the power structure comes down. Mm. So you, you, you work hard to keep that in place. And I think that's part of the logic of like why the likes of Stalin and Mao and Pol Pot and so on had the regular purges of all the high command. Mm -hmm. It's so anyone with any nous or anyone like who had a memory type thing, you're basically just killing them. So they can't plot. They can't, um, remember the terrible stuff you've yeah. done. Um, and, you know, you do that every once in a while, and it kind of erects any chance of a new uprising or a new revolution coming about. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's the most effective. Um, the likes of Ceausescu didn't do that, so that's why so he when, was... When we're a... talking of level of insanity, I mean, surely this... A, a person who kills pretty much a quarter of his own population must must surely rate pretty high. I mean... Are we talking a nine or a ten here? Well, I, again, it depends. So I'm just closing these old books. Here's a picture of uh, Ceausescu with uh, Paul Pop in 1978. Hmm. Is that James Callahan around the corner? No, so. Yeah, one sec. It's messing around. Right, okay. Uh, where's where's this picture? Oh, sorry, it's on his Wikipedia page. Oh, right. It's just uh, that there is a picture of him and uh, Ceausescu in 78. Sorry. Oh, right. 
But, um, okay, level, level of insanity. I mean, what, I mean, he, like, what, Br British, the thing is, right, the way you're, I think the way you're looking at this is, like, implementing communism is a high level of insanity, as far as I can tell, by the way you're, you're, um... It, to my mind, it is just, once you start implementing something, yeah. and it becomes patently obvious that it's not working, yeah, and you just keep doubling down and doubling down and doubling down, um, yeah, that that is insane. But your 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 version of not working includes millions of deaths. His version doesn't. What what I mean is always remember that these um, political whiz kids also specialize in talking their way semantically out of any ideological problem. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, I know you're no longer there, but you've lived long enough on Twitter to know that. Um, so I've got the feeling they 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 know that they have that option of just basically talking their way out of it, and yet that they still continue on with the purity <laughs> of the project, yeah, even they, they see that people are you know dying like flies. Yeah, but I don't think they care. They, I I don't think that's that's not that like in 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 this sort of worldview, it, it's okay. It's for the people. You know, everything it will always be for the people, and these I, these will instantly be dismissed as capitalists or something. You know, just it'll, they're the out group. It's okay. You know, the rest of us are fine. We're the good people. We're the people. You know, it, so they, they the don't... people the people who do, who die, no matter who they are, will be identified as deserving. Yeah, post death, so to speak. Yeah. And so yeah. it's it's I, the, I, it's not I, insanity. I think... It's ideology that's causing it. But 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 I think with Pol Pot. Um, it's not just that socialism was failing and loads of people were dying. Like they had the killing fields. Weren't they doing like sick experiments? Didn't they find all sorts of stuff like that out about? Like it, it was pretty. Let me uh, let me have a quick check. Like the the, so... the Rouge in general was like a pretty dark organization. On top yeah. of all of the other stuff that happened. Oh, yeah. There's a famous film. I'm trying to remember what the name of that film is. It the um, not the Killing Fields, maybe maybe it's called the Killing Fields. There's, there's a pretty famous film about um, well, Cambodia. Yes, there is a, a movie called The Killing Fields. Yes. So I think it won an Oscar or two. But apparently, it's one of the most horrifying regimes that have ever been, uh, just for sheer level of brutality yeah. and uh, lack of, uh, I guess. It, if there was a rating for crimes against humanity, he'd have a ten, Pol Pot. So yes, yes, a bit of rating. With within any government, and and however high you know you, you go on the dictatorial scale, there needs to be some level of you know wiggle room left for human beings. And. When it comes to Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge regime, I think you get to the point where there's just no oxygen left for humanity to, to exist within the system. And mm -hmm. I, I think that is the absolute horror story of it. Somebody's written the chat, Khmer Rouge jailers killed the babies of the regime's victory by battering them against trees to stop them growing up and okay, taking okay. revenge. Let's, let's give him a nice fat score then. How much oh. he, he sounds like he's running an absolute madhouse. Pol Pot um, killed everyone that they found intelligent. Oh, yeah, yeah. They killed all the people with glasses. What was I thinking yeah, of? Yeah, they, they were against education, weren't they? Yeah. They Actually, had yeah, a kind of purity thing. You needed to be a person of the land. So anybody who was an intellectual, anybody who was in any way educated, was an enemy of the people. So well, we'll get, we'll they, give declared them war on, they declared war on education itself. <laughs> he, he, he has to have a 9 or a 10, because he's yeah. just a fucking madman. And he's got the rock in the chairman mouse style, I can see. Well, I mean, looking at that That's picture, not very good. Um, uh, one of the reasons that picture is quite striking is because apparently he was, you know, he was talking to the press and they were asking him questions about some American or whatever, I believe, who was a prisoner of the Khmer Rouge. And it was believed that he had signed that person's death warrant within about the 24 hours preceding and was being you know, very coy about what would be happening to this person. Oh, well, we'll see, you know. Um, and at the same time, with that outfit on, 
he's looking very Dr. No, or is that just me? <laughs> well, yeah, I was about to say this, because both him, Mao, and, and indeed Stalin, all that kind of grey, like, Dr. No slash Dr. Evil number, it's got a very nondescript wear. And, and I, I wonder if that's part of the ideology. That's the kind of, I'm a communist, I just want, I'm just like you. I'm, I'm just part of the system. I don't have any, you know, individuality, you know, despite the fact that I'm a mad dictator and a cult of personality around me, I'm not going to go around wearing a massive cape um, because I'm a communist and I'm, it's, it's all a brotherhood type thing. I'm just the instrument of the people, something like this. Yeah, shall we give them one? One for one. sense of style? Yeah, it's pretty low. It's, it's, he, I'm looking through his pictures and he generally dresses like a can. Bodian peasant. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's low. Um, right, decimal bonus trait. Let me dig up Corbin. <laughs> <laughs> so dark giving him to Corbin, but yeah, I I, I don't. He is literally a real communist. So I don't doubt. I don't doubt that uh, Corbin wouldn't like if pushed in shove. He, he'd find ways to defend that. Yeah. Yeah. He 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 literally would, and you know it. Right. Okay. Shall we go for the big man himself? <laughs> he, might, he might be a good one to end on. What do you reckon, fellas? Yeah. Um, okay. So, body count. Not that bad. 19.3 uh, million deaths. Yeah, through, not, not foreign conquest, remember. And, and then the foreign, the, if you include World War II, he gets a plus 29 million on that. Oh, one. really, does he? <laughs> 19's quite good, though. I mean, you know, what, you, you know, what you're saying is he had he made a bit of an impact. Yeah. So I mean, so what? Seven? <laughs> <laughs> I'm surely he's a perfect ten. No. no well, no, because we uh, much worse. Mao and Stalin. No, Trump. no, 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 no. Consider his body count compared to the amount of time he had. What? Twelve years? What? So I mean. Just the sheer efficiency and rapidity of his killing machine compared to everyone else. Okay, we'll give him an eight. I, I, I would say he was really rapacious. I, I, I would, I would really see him as, as. Um, I, I know that he doesn't get the. the they they were all really rapacious, man. I, I, but, <laughs> um, well, no, I, I mean, I really think he is the one that makes all the others look as though they're moving in slow motion when it comes to really? killing people. So I'm gonna, I don't want to worry you, but the chat has gone oddly wild. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Ah, I don't. I don't. I'm, I'm not that impressed with that off Hitler, to be honest. Nineteen point three. Guess again. You think he let the side down? He could have. He could have actually made a more oh, of that. I mean, it's just another instance of where a Chinese guy beats an Aryan, isn't it? It's, like, it's got to be set. I think a seven. You know, IQ rates, boom, nailed. You know, body count, boom, nailed. What next? Manufacturing, don't even make China laugh. They're, they're kicking the Aryan ass, and they must know it. It's, they must have this massive inferiority complex about the Chinese. And right, I, I love the way they're like, triggering oh, people from, uh, you know, from Timbuktu <laughs> to, uh, you know, Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> um, but okay, we'll give him an eight for his body count. Eight. That seems fair. It seems it seems right that he'd be beaten by Mao and Stalin at least. And that's I, that's how I feel about it, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, longevity that must be pretty poor, then, really. Yes. As I say, he's not um, not particularly yeah. not particularly good at longevity, and, and that's what I mean. He didn't actually, for all his talk of the thousand year Reich. Yeah. yeah. It, it wasn't anything stable. It, it... I can't believe a failed artist didn't create a thousand year right. <laughs> Look, how did this happen? <laughs> um, so yeah, he was what? Um, 11 years in office. Um, so... Four. Well, that's a four. It's very yeah, poor. Give him a four. Yeah. Not a good in exam at all. Four. Level of insanity. Oh. Where do we good. start? I mean... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He was, he was a vegetarian. I mean, that's weird. Well, I mean, that that's a ten in itself. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's like okay. You know, I mean, in, invading Russia has got to rank up there. Yeah, someone had yeah. already done that before, haven't they? Um, a few you, times. You might have thought that. Uh, um, 
Yeah, I mean, come off it. There's, there's just no debate here, is there really? Um, surely he's, he's a 10. It's got to be. He was liter he's literally hit. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing is now, I, I wonder how much of it is like overblowing the myth of the man. Like, I mean, yeah, he was like, again, like he was, he was a fascist. So like what he believed wasn't necessarily irrational to his worldview. It's just his worldview may have been slightly irrational. Well, I mean, you know, when it comes to irrationality <laughs> to his worldview, I, I can I can stop you right there with you know, the world Superman and the Aryan race and blonde hairs and blue yeah. eyes. Yeah, don't, don't worry, I'm not saying he's not. I'm not athletic, saying he's not a good good eight uh, or nine or something. Germanic stock, and then you look at this short, stubby man with dark hair, and you just wonder. <laughs> Isn't there some kind of logical breach there somewhere? Yeah, I'm not saying he wasn't a good solid sort of eight or nine, but like, <laughs> I, I don't want to make him out to be a cartoon villain. You know, I want to be realistic because he's at this point. It's it's not even that like he was like that exceptional, really. You know, I mean, like you say, like Mussolini had exactly the same kind of speeches. It's just he was more successful because Germany was Germany and Italy was shit. You well, know? you're um, kind of talking of the mundanity of evil here, aren't you? Yeah, I am. That, yeah. that um, these people tend to be small fry that have that have been given a job that is beyond, beyond their pay them. grade, really. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. then they start I'll... flailing around and causing no end of mayhem. Yeah. But I think we have to, a bit like what we were saying, what, what academic agent said before about Mugabe, is that, you know, getting worse as he goes on. I think sure. what it is with Hitler is he may start out as an ideologue, but then he begins to believe in his own Wagnerian myth, so to speak. Undoubtedly, you know? yeah. Undoubtedly, and and yeah. that's when he just completely loses his marbles. Because he then suddenly becomes the greatest general on earth. He starts overruling yeah. his yeah. own generals and taking over I will give the strategy. Um, give <laughs> if it, um, I, I'm persuaded. There's a style. It's probably going to be fairly good, isn't it? Let's be honest. Hmm. Um, well, what, what do we think? You see, the thing is, is that I, I feel like there are more stylish... Uh, I hesitate to say this, but more, yeah. st more stylish Nazis than Hitler. <laughs> Yeah, realistically, we, we should be judging the SS, shouldn't we? Who did Hugo Boss design uniforms for? <laughs> like he did wear like the long coat. That's quite cool. Look, like, if you ever see him on, like you know, when he's riding on the back of the. Well, I think he also possessed the wisdom to realize that he wasn't really a snappy looker. So yeah. he, he he couldn't really um, certain some of the kind of um, very chic stuff that some of the Nazis were wearing, he wouldn't be able to pull off. Yeah, I mean, you've seen the pictures, like, you've seen the pictures of him in shorts as well, right? Yes, and he's just yeah. a Boy Scout. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think, to a certain extent, he had the, he had the wherewithal to realise there were certain things he couldn't do. Mm -hmm. And looking cool was one of them, which is, I guess, why all these soldiers look cool instead. <laughs> I mean, the moustache is a faux pas, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah, not. It is, yeah. So, sorry, Hitler, well, you're only getting a three for style. The, the, the moustache came from the First World War, didn't it? He actually cut the ends off his moustache so that it wouldn't interfere with his gas mask. Oh, is that really? I didn't know yeah. that. <laughs> who, who, who's the despot bonus trait going to be? It's going to have to be Nick Griffin, I guess. Uh... <laughs> seems, seems a bit harsh, to be honest. <laughs> Like, I'm no fan of Nick Griffin, but like, I, I don't, I don't actually give a shit about the man, you know. Richard Spencer, I don't know. No, I don't care about Richard Spencer either. Who's, I mean, who, who is a, who is a fascist? I mean, <laughs> could just who, stick Angela Merkel out. That would be funny. Yeah, just, I, I don't want to do it, but like, <laughs> see, see, seems good. Doesn't it? I mean, yeah. Jean Claude Juncker. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, Juncker's not nearly as fucking charismatic as Hitler was. I, I, I just spotted this thing in the chat where somebody said um, he only had one ball and therefore he was low energy. 
that's the old Donald Trump. Uh, yeah. It's not in him. both testicles, and he showed him a thing or two. Yeah, if you've ever listened to any of his speeches, low energy is not really what you would attribute to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just over, over, overplaying it. He's just like playing it because he sucked. John Tron. Oh, I'm not putting <laughs> John Tron on. I don't know who to put on. PewDiePie. That seems a bit harsh, too. <laughs> ben Shapiro. <laughs> no, I like Ben Shapiro. <laughs> Movie uh, Bob. So basically, oh, yeah. we're kind of, um, we're, we're kind of um, uh, finishing with Hitler, are we? Yeah, I think Bob, so, Bob Chipman gets it because of his support for eugenics. Bob Chipman okay. is bizarrely in favor of eugenics. He he can actually <laughs> he can actually like make an argument for improving the human race by declaring some people were born to be inferior. That's okay. That's nice, Bob. Why would you do this, Bob? You're a movie critic, Bob. <laughs> but then it was an artist, so fuck, man. You know. <sighs> Uh, no, I mean, since we're since we're um, finishing with with Adolf Hitler, um, mm. there was just sort of one or two gems I found on some of the uh, African dictators that are just worth sharing, nonetheless. Um, mm, so, uh, you know, with Mobutu, um, we just basically know him as Mobutu, but it, it says here on his Wikipedia page, in 1972, Mobutu renamed himself. Mobutu Seseseko Nkunu Nbendo Waza Banga, which translates into the all-powerful warrior who, because of his endurance and inflexible will to win, goes from conquest to conquest, leaving fire in his wake. Wow. That's someone you don't want to fuck with, man. So, yeah, it, it kind of... It, Gives you an idea of just with just you know when you compare that with uh, Idi Amin, there is a certain kind of um, je ne sais quoi about these people. And there was this guy <laughs> that, that. I, that I had never heard of before. I must admit, uh, whom you put on the list, academic agent, which was Yakubu Gowon or Gawon. Yes, I don't pronounce that name. He was a kind of military dictator of Nigeria for a while. And with him, it all fell apart because in the end, basically, his administration was so rubbish that sooner or later, it kind of undid itself. So there's just these wonderful two sentences, which um, the corruption of Gawan's administration culminated in the notorious cement armada in the summer of 1975, <laughs> when the port of Lagos became jammed with hundreds of ships trying to unload cement. Somehow, agents of the Nigerian government had signed contracts with 68 different international suppliers for the delivery of a total of 20 million tons of cement in one year to Lagos, even though its port could only accept 1 million tons of cargo per year. <laughs> so it just basically, they had an armada of ships full of cement in their, you know, surrounding their harbor, so much so that it got completely logjammed. They apparently were paying, um, you know, uh, paying shippers decades later just for the fees of their ships being idle in the port. And, you know, they couldn't get any food in and out of the bloody uh, country because the whole place was log jammed with ships full of cement. <laughs> Some of the chats like African warlords are hilarious as fuck. It's like, well, so, yes, there is, there, is, yes. You know, there is an element of hilarity about the whole yeah. thing. And if there is just one thing that you could do us as a favor, it's just, just, we don't need to talk about him if you could just show us the Gaddafi card. Because I think that one takes the prize. Oh, he would have taken style, definitely. Um, but I've, I've closed everything down now. Oh, well, but we yeah, can, just... I'll tell you, we, we've, we've still got loads more of these, so we can do this again if you guys want. Because th these are great. And I can probably actually set up some sort of card game so we can actually play it. <laughs> <laughs> so we we should definitely do another one of these because yeah i mean i would i would definitely be going for it because yeah. um, should I, we just I, go through a few super chats just because uh, i've missed a bunch okay 
So um, too late says jelly beans. I'm not sure that's in respect to. Sorry, uh, Dankula's dog Buddha for special trait on Hitler. Ah, oh yes, yes. yes. How did we miss that? Yeah. Yes, particularly since the fourteen wolves. I must admit, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of the funniest clips I've seen on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, same. Um, yeah, I'll, fi I'll fix that next time. Remind me, um, Angela Merkel. Yeah, we uh, we could we should have used Angela Merkel, but we we'd already used her, haven't we? Oh no, oh, we didn't. Oh, all right, no, I think we spared Angela Merkel that indignity. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll get her next time. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd be happy to uh, you know do this again with some. Uh, other luminaries. <laughs> I, I may have to. I may have to. Uh, you know, produce a card with Guy Verhofstadt on just just for fun's sake. <laughs> hey, if you've got more, you know, if you want to make more cards, that's fine. We can add it to the deck. Um, but yeah, I'm sure I can like uh, make a game about this. Um, yeah, we, and then we'll actually have a game. Like maybe you can invite like uh, somebody. We have like a four way game of uh, dictated drop drums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can do it. Um, so you've got to see uh, YouTube videos of the cultural activities in Auschwitz. They had plays, an orchestra, swimming pool, and a library. Death camp, work camp. Well, it's a controversial opinion from The Real Teal. Cancer Kirk, what do you, great name. <laughs> what do you think of Franco's exit transition? Again, you know, uh, a bit like the Pinochet character, here is someone who handed over to democracy. So... Mm. Um, Whatever you think of dictators, if they've at least got the ability to let go, then um, yeah, fine. Hmm. You know, to kind of begin setting up, because I think Franco basically st stayed there until the end, but he he actually began setting up something rather than just you know trying to hand over to a son of his or something like that. Yeah. Well, he's he's on the list for next time, so we'll we'll definitely we'll definitely come to him. I've got the card for him. Um, would have killed more as a vampire with Nazi vampires. Probably true. <laughs> Happy Halloween, buy some Kinder Chocolate. It's strange that a Kinder Chocolate salesman would super chat me. Um, <laughs> there are allegations made in the recent JFK declassified files that Hitler made it to South America, or at least as alluded to. Yeah, the FBI released some stuff a while back, a few years back about that as well. Um, I think it's probably true. I, I honestly would not be surprised in any way, shape, or form if Hitler had escaped and they just lied about burning his body or dumping it in a river or whatever they fucking did claim they did with it. I would be very surprised. Um, I think he would he would really be one of those people that all the powers really would have wanted to get their hands on. Maybe. Maybe. But once you've set the narrative and once because I mean you know they learned about this decades later. And it wasn't like the day after when all the when everything was mobilized that they got a report that in South America there's Hitler basically though you know this is in like the 60s and 70s you know everything had calmed down it's like well what, what does it matter you know it's 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 just something they didn't need to follow up i mean it's probably bullshit who cares but like it wouldn't surprise me if it turned out to be true i would be fairly taken aback let's put it really? like that okay yeah no i, I really think that he uh, was uh, there, there was I think there's also that element of what we were touching on before of kind of, you know, falling from grace, of having it all and then, you know, basically for it all to fall apart. I cannot see Hitler going from, you know, the kind of, uh, you know, apprentice god that he was trying to set himself up to be hmm. to then just being somewhere on the Pampas in Ar Argentina. Isn't, or isn't that way more ignoble, though, than, than shooting yourself? There's a certain sort of, you know, romanticism about, okay, well, then he, him and Eva Braun kill themselves. It's like, well, it's, it's far more humiliating that he just ends up as some fucking peasant in Argentina. True, yes. But uh, that's, that's exactly why I think he would never do that. You think? I mean, I don't, I, maybe. You know? But I, I, it just, it's too pat for me. It's like, oh, yeah, and then he died. And then it was all over. It's like, really? Is that? It's easy. You know, that's, that's a good, good narrative. Let's carry on. Well, have you ever heard the story of, um, you know, the Soviets and, you know, with them having the bodies? And I they have basically had these, you know, they had these badly charred bodies and they were moving yeah. them about. And at first, of course, one wanted to take them back to Moscow because, you know, Stalin yeah, yeah. wanted his prize. But, um, well, obviously they were charred to pieces. That It was of no use to Stalin. He couldn't basically um, just basically show him off, so to speak. Um, so... In the end, all the bureaucrats, no one was quite 
no one wanted to make any decision. So you just had these armies marching around Eastern Europe with increasingly decaying bodies that began, mm. you know, going ever more rancid until eventually someone just said, look, for mercy's sake, the stench is too bad. We just have to bury them somewhere. And yeah, that's see, why no one knows where they're buried. Uh, that's that's not the story I heard. I, I heard they were specifically, um, you know, spread around or whatever to prevent them becoming uh, a place for mourners, and like for, for Nazis to use as a, basically as a pilgrimage site. I mean, um, yeah, that, that would that would make perfect sense. I mean, that's why they also yeah. destroyed Hitler's bunker, if you remember. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, no, the tale I heard was that they were, um, they basically had these bodies and eventually, yeah, they, they were just slowly turning to glue, so to speak. And they just decided, look, we need to do something with them. We can't. This waiting for the bureaucracy to decide what they want to do with them, it, it can't continue. Um, mm. We just, yeah, we need to get rid of them. Well, I don't know the truth of either one, to be honest. Oh, yeah, but, um, true enough. I mean, in, yeah, the, yeah. in the chaos after the war, anything could happen. Yeah. And, and no, the thing is, it's not just chaos of the war. Because, I mean, as far as I was aware, our knowledge of what happened to Hitler's body came from the KGB. So it's like, hmm, known truth tellers. Okay. It's, yes, it's you know. these specific, you know, these, these very um, known, uh, yeah. you know, reliable sources, the CIA and the KGB. Yeah, exactly. You know you can believe every single word that comes from that. <laughs> exactly. So it's just like, you know, the, the, what actually happened really doesn't matter as much as the narrative of what happened. Because at the end of it, you know, Hitler didn't return from the moon as Mecca Hitler or anything. So, you know, it, it was fine. You know, whatever, whatever, however it happened, at least, you know, the, the, the deal was done, you know. Um, the Wehrmacht had cool weapons. Uh, I guess they did. Pol Pot was a teacher, by the way. Ironic that he killed intellectuals. Yes, so. he, a teacher that turned on, on uh, education. Yes, yeah. it's a bit like that a story <laughs> I had on, on this weekend with the um, gender studies professor who had left neuroscience to become a gender studies professor and then wrote some kind of essay um, saying how we need a new feminist way of gaining knowledge and it needs to be anti anti racist and anti this and anti that and also anti science. Well, this is a former neuroscientist who now is basically decrying science and saying that it's racist and colonialist and it perpetuates uh, stereotypes and slavery, and that we now need a new feminist science of sorts. Um, so yeah, it, it's did in, they have in that a proposition? Regard, she's done a full pot. Part. Yeah, but did, did they have a proposition on what that would be? No, no. They're, right. they're always rather um, they're always rather weak on propositions. Yeah, because I mean, like, I'm just thinking. Okay, so you want an alternative m method of gathering knowledge that you can be certain is genuine knowledge than science. Yes, because uh, science is racist and based on colonial attitudes and slavery. Okay. And another piece was also maths. Um, you know, was, white was supremacy, white heard. and white supremacy. Yes, yeah, I saw that one. Um, so yeah, you had though you, you you have these things coming forth, and you just um, it's just a sort of a face palm moment when you, yeah. When the you irony about maths, these of course, is that it perpetuates Asian supremacy. You know, so. uh, all we need to, the chat to tell us is that it's um, that the Pol Pot was a maths teacher, and then then we've got full circle. <laughs> he was Asian, of course. He was a maths teacher. <laughs> <laughs> There is a docu documentary called S21 that will fucking haunt you. Um, I'm actually going to look that up because I don't, I, I, I'm macabre in that way. S21. Uh, so is that is that regarding something in Cambodia. Uh, in Cambodia? Yeah. The killing fields of Cambodia. Man, that is... I, mean, I remember Jordan Peterson mentioning something like that. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't S21. It was some other configurations of numbers and, and letters. And um, he even sort of said, well, you know, look it up if you dare. And uh, yes, it w these were the experiments that the Japanese were conducting, um, largely with Chinese and Koreans. And um, yeah, they were in, they were in full-scale oh. Mengele territory. Shit, this is a prison. Um, oh, man, this is actually... And um, the, the scary bit about it, when you read the full article, was that... All the scientists, all the doctors, all the people involved in this all got off scot-free. 
because um, the the Americans wanted the data. Hmm. They basically said, "Well, look, we want we want to know the results of these experiments." So effectively, the exchange was, "We'll let you off if you tell us what you've learned from it." Because yes, they basically infected. They, they basically gave people infectious diseases and didn't treat them in order to see how they would develop. Jesus, I'm I'm reading through this now, and it's like this S twenty one was basically like Mengele's private prison. Just like holy shit! Oh, so the, yeah. the S twenty one actually refers to Mengele himself, does it? So it's, no, 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 I it's a you... prison. No, 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 no. It's not Mengele. It's like what he would set up if he could set okay. it up. Um, yeah, where people are just you know, tortured and killed and experimented on and all this sort of shit. Um, it was a secret prison, and it was run by absolute fucking lunatics. Oh, I mean, when it comes to. Um... When it comes to sort of dictatorships and whatever, lunatics uh, are never scarce for some reason. Yeah, um, but I mean, like the, the guards of this prison age, were aged between fifteen and nineteen. Yeah, and you can imagine how brutal these teenage boys were encouraged to be. Yeah. No, I mean, I um, I think it was Mobutu who, uh, in in that uh, part where I I kind of checked um, to see. You know, and, and there was something, I, I think it was him, where basically they described the torture of one particular uh, person whom he wanted rid of, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, hang on, I'm just looking it up here. Uh, so basically, um, so this is a minister of education and rebel leader who was in exile. And then they basically negotiated with him, giving him the impression that he would be permitted to return. And uh, it just basically says, um, you know, he returned to Brazzaville on the assumption that he would be amnestied, but was tortured and killed by Mobutu's forces. Jesus. While Mulele was still alive, his eyes were gouged out, his genitals were ripped off, and his limbs were amputated one by one. So um, when, it, when it comes to these folks, um, it, th this is what I said about, you know, Pinochet. Once you start getting creative about killing people, there is yeah. something wrong with you. <laughs> because... uh, sorry, uh, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt, but there's a, a message I have to reply to very quickly. I do apologize. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Isaac, I haven't spoken to you in ages, man. How's it going? Um, am I, have I got you on Skype? Contact me on Skype, dude. I'm not coming back to Twitter. Twitter sucks. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm glad to be off it. You should get, everyone should get off it, but I'm not surprised to see you turn up in a fucking hangout about dictators. <laughs> Joking aside, seriously, come on, you can you can join us from the next one, man. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Um, no, no problem. Um, no, so, I, I say it, it's yeah. it's the creativity because mm. in the end, it's completely utilitarian. You're the you're the dictator. You want rid of someone, just have him shot. Uh, yeah. So uh, don't forget all the mines they're still digging up. Good point. Uh, <laughs> And uh, someone else, Pol Pot is like the Black Death, but for Cambodia. Very comparable numbers, yes. Actually, yes. That's a very, yeah. very apt comparison. I mean, he's probably got the highest percentile for his uh, yes, killing. Yes, I think by, by a long shot. Yeah. Um, so Then again, with Mao, it didn't seem for the want of trying. I mean, given what I said there, when he's basically writing his little essay saying, well, perhaps a tenth of all the peasants will die. So I think, you know, if if Mao's predictions would have come true in his various attempts, mm -hmm. then he may have actually been a rival to Pol Pot. He was just inefficient in his killing. Yeah. Uh, someone uh, ha so like slash Pol slash Pot did nothing wrong. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, killed 1.13 mil out of 8 mil, so 33% of Cambodia. Could have been higher than that, to be honest. Um, a redistributionist made a spurg post on your Reddit. Just to spite him, here's the money he would have taken from me. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> you mean a socialist turned up and bitched about me not being a socialist? Sucks for them. Um, what's the release date for this game? Uh, I haven't got a release date for this game. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> I hadn't thought about it. Um, Mugabe killed at least 30,000 in Matebele land. That's uh, something I've been able to corroborate. 20,000 was all I could find. Um, and yeah, he did need it. Mugabe needed to pump up those numbers. They genuinely were rookie numbers. This is not, not impressive. 
for a dictator. Yeah, I think we've I think we've basically you know I think we're all kind of a bit taken aback by some of them as mm. to um you know how how low those figures were. Um because yes you do expect you know all of these people to be in the hundreds of thousands of millions and yeah. then with some of them you suddenly think well hang on a moment 30,000 really that's that's all there was i, I can't believe pinochet was only 2200 it's like it's, it, it it really is um it's weak <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's barely must, being a dictator you know, at all school, Come on. school report you know must try better must try harder yes <laughs> yeah um yeah does body count increase to relative population even if small by raw numbers yeah we yeah sorry that was the pulp thing yeah yeah i think it uh, as i say that's what i differed from you too because i felt it's um it's it's in relation to the overall size of the population no, i think that's effect, relevant but i think it's also related to and this is where where you two differed from me it also relates to how much time you've got and yeah. I think in that regard, Hitler was astonishingly efficient. Um, well, that's, that's true. That's a fair point. You know, ha had one had one given him more time to expand, <laughs> I think his numbers would have um, would have shot up rather remarkably. Mm. Lenin's second tier dictator, a side case pick. Stalin took power at least. Lenin was given it by the Kaiser, not earned. Sad. Impressive body count, though. <laughs> pretty, pretty staggering. So, this is this astonishing level of cynicism within, uh, within your chat. Um, yeah, high style dictator needs to be Hitler. He had millions of shoes, clothes, glasses, and knew how to use an oven. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Aside from being awful, I, I, it doesn't matter. The style could suck, you know. And he, I, I'm not impressed with his style. I, I think, I think you were right, Bertie. He knew he wasn't cool, you know. Yes, I think he he was smart enough to realize that, uh, you know, if you look at some of the sort of um, dandies of the um, of the Nazis, you know, people like hmm. what was a pilot called Adolf Galland, um, you know, who always had his peak cap at an angle. And uh, you know people like that. With him, to be honest. Um, then there was also that. Uh, oh God, there was, there was that horrible. Um, was he a Gestapo or whatever? He, I think he was somewhere in the Czech Republic. Was it in Prague that the British organised an assassination of the chap? Uh, and he was also sort of a you know uh, a blonde Aryan boy who was a favourite. I, I don't know. I'd have to look it up. And and he was. Um, is it Heydrich or something like that? And, and he was assassinated by British intelligence, basically. They, they set up... Uh, um, and again, you see someone who looked very smart in his uniform, and again, the, the peak cap at an angle, and very jaunty. I'll tell you what, after we've done this, we're going to have to do one for democratic leaders. Because <laughs> we could do a comparable one. Yeah, basically, how to, how to properly do it. Yes, I'm, I'm told here by the chat it is Heidrich. The the um you know the the the, the snazzy looking one and, and mm. I think that's where Hitler just realised look I'm not going to be able to compete with these boys anyway so I'm yeah. just going to keep it fairly simple right okay um shall we uh, bring it into the stream that's um almost yes I think I think we're done and I think the um I think the academic agent has either got technical problems or something I think else. it's his technical problems that are remaining with us um but that's fine um but yeah we'll do, we'll definitely do another one of these man um. Because we still got loads of those card cards left, and then uh, I'll sort out some online game card game, and uh, we'll be able to give okay, it a crack. Brilliant. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Well, Take it easy. An honor and a privilege. So, thank you very much for having me. Oh, no problem. Take care. See you about.